Hello, everybody, and welcome to Weekly Manga Recap. It is April the 26th of 2017, and uh, this mysterious other Pennsylvanian has replaced Chris. Don't freak out. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, I'm checking. I'll be your guest host for this uh, podcast. Are you representing really, NBC? Not... What was that? <laughs> I, dude, I just got done doing an internship at a news station. So if that's the way you want, want to go, Walter Cronkite with this, I could totally do that. I, that might be a little <laughs> bit weird for two hours, but. <laughs> and in this chapter of my here academia, the uh, the local drug ring. Actually, that actually could sync up right away. Well. Should... <laughs> 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 works out pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Rolo T, uh, in case you missed it because he has been tweeting all about it uh, the past week or so, uh, Rolo T, Chris, is in Spain. He's on vacation. Uh, he's not going to be joining me for this one. Uh, but it's okay. We've got Teching 101 here, uh, award-winning YouTuber. Uh, award-winning, yeah. yeah uh, who's going to be talking manga with me this week. Uh, how you been, man? I think it's been I, since what Bleach ended. I think that we last got yeah, to talk with you. Yeah, I think it was. It was the last one. It was either the con, the uh, the competition we had, the quiz, or oh, it was. Oh yeah, uh, I think that that's it. I think there was a video I did either after that with this, but it's been it's been about eight months since I've been on. So thanks for having me again. Thanks for being. Was yeah. that your first uh, thought when it came to a guest host, or was there like a list of people? No, it was pretty much <laughs> you. Like, <Okay. laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I was thinking about, like, how, okay, I kind of want to be on the show again, but I just don't want to, like, send, like, hey, uh, I want to come on again. Please let me back on. <laughs> so it's always awkward. So I think, ah, just let them if they feel like it, you know. No, no problems, um, man. It's synced up about right. So, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have a fair amount of manga to talk about this week. You read mm -hmm. uh, you read Hajime no Ippo, right? Like, you know that that's, like, our recommendation we're doing, right? You know? The, the, oh, oh, the nearly oh, uh, eleven hundred chapter well, boxing manga you have you have read. You know that, what? Right? Yeah. Honestly, uh, I have I've read occasionally. You know, when I'm bored and I've read everything else and I'm not doing anything, I'll, I'll read a chapter or so of that. It, it has guys with kickboxing, right? Yeah, sure, totally. No, uh, yeah, almost, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, almost. Damn it, I was close. But uh, no, we're just gonna do our usual recap stuff. Um, there are what I think we've got nine series to talk about this week. So yes. I think that uh, we're just gonna jump into it, and uh, okay. you, you are you already like uh, read most of these anyway. So I actually do, and because of uh, you gave me the list, and I went ahead and I read Doctor Stone, and we never learn because they're relatively You're short. <laughs> yeah, they're new. They're actually really good. I was actually really enjoying myself with them. We'll get to that. Uh, the only ones that I'm so we're like ninety percent there. The only ones I'm not caught up on are Food Wars and uh, Seven Deadly Sins, despite the pleas from all my fans that keep telling me to read Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, so I can totally see that. Uh, it's a yeah. pretty intense series, but um, it, okay. But we're gonna do our usual run through, uh, our usual order. Which I'm not really sure how I ended up coming up with this or order. Actually, literally just one time. This one time I was like, "Well, we're not gonna do. We don't have World Trigger to put at the end anymore." And I don't. And we didn't want to end on like I think it was Torico. Yeah. Torico, I think at the time. And so it was I wanted like, to ask yeah. you about that. Did World Trigger end, or did it get canceled, on, or something? It's on hiatus. Uh, ah, yeah. hiatus hell. Okay. Uh, Ashihara uh, has been sick, and uh, I guess I think that they he's at the point where he's almost recovered, but they're kind of I guess waiting for the right opportunity for him to come back. I don't know. Okay. Well, oh. you know, fingers crossed on that. Yeah, fingers crossed on that series I don't read, but maybe I'll get into it. Actually, I love getting into series on hiatus because then I can just like, oh, you not worry about up, it. Yeah. Getting it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did with Hunter Hunter. Yeah. And then you did it again. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, again. and again and again and again. It's going to come back again for a month. Uh, or, okay. But yeah, let's do My Hero Academia start thing, starting things let's, off. Let's jump into it here. So, uh, last time, uh, all of the interning students were called into a meeting uh, by Sir Nidai, who brought together all three of the hero organizations to discuss uh, the A Prefix of Death. And uh, we, the entire chapter is basically about this meeting, which, um, actually, there's... There's a surprising it, a, amount of looking down on on people in this. It's, it, but uh, um, yeah. I mean, it's mostly like the uh, like the few of the heroes that aren't that well acquainted with the uh, you know UA students, and they're just like these damn kids being here. What are they doing here? They're just and holding us back. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, yeah, we have to explain things to them in this yeah, discussion. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, we have to talk with these people in this he, talk. 
yeah, you mean to tell me that in this meeting where we discuss the eight prefects of death, we actually have to explain what the eight prefects of death are doing? Come on now. I've got, I don't know, when the hell does, else does he have to do anyway? It's like, and of uh, course it's a hero that we've never seen before. Exactly. So he's now, he, he's just immediately now the asshole hero. Just carrying yeah. over the rich people from Black Clover to fill this it, role, basically. Oh god, yes, yes, yes. How can a peasant be a hero? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but it's a very dialogue uh, heavy centric chapter there. Yeah, we uh, do get introduced to some pretty interesting looking characters, though. Like, uh, I really like uh, the Night, a- Night Eye Agency psychic that we're introduced to, Centipeder. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is crew? Well, he's he's one of their like uh, like uh, what's it called? Um, one of their branch offices sidekick. He's like, I don't think he's like an office like direct sidekick because that's like just Bubble Girl right. and Mario. But this guy, I guess, was designed by a fan who won this contest. And uh, it's a cool yeah. design. I mean, you know, just this just this guy in a suit, but then there's a freaking centipede coming out I, of his neck. It's so I great. Can't, I can't tell if his head is a centipede and it's just like a normal head that he has the thing, or it's like he's using it as like a scarf. It's yeah. it's a cool design. Yeah. And I have to kind of wonder: is like is is the hero like is this all his body or is he like yeah. possessing a human body or so, that he was provided or oh that's kind of do- oh, that he was provided or that he just like oh hijacked. like you know or you know well, well that or you know maybe like you know he was like donated a cadaver or maybe it's yeah. an artificial body or maybe he just has a centipede head a giant centipede growing out of yeah, his neck like- I wonder if how he attacks, does he just, like, stretch out his neck and it's, like, connected to his body? Or if he just, like, leaves the actual body and that becomes the centipede and just attacks people that way? I I don't know. So, uh, there's a bunch of dialogue that that does establish a bunch of stuff that we already know. Oh, we're investigating this group. Uh, They've made contact with the League of Villains uh, twice uh, was the, and we they actually mm-hmm. have video of twice leading uh, overhaul into into the meeting and stuff like that. Yes, um, uh, we find out about uh, it's actually this actually part reminded me of Hunter Hunter. We find we find out about the Hero Network, which is like the internet website you know Skype thing that's exclusively just for heroes, and that's how they like communicate and everything. It's kind of weird, honestly. <laughs> we have our own private internet system. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but that's just how it goes, I guess. I mean, I guess they have to have a way of communicating with each other because, you know, they're they're kind of like heroes. They can't just put that stuff out there. Uh, random hero uh, that is not familiar with the students is like, what are those UA kids doing here? And Fat Gum sticks up on their behalf. He, like, just springs out of his chair and you yeah. actually see it <laughs> flying backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I love Fat Gum. He's great. He's such a he's a really cool guy, honestly. Yeah. And he gives out candy in this chapter. It's great. Yeah, because he, because he, because he's like, I actually don't know no don't know all of you students, but I'm not fat gum. It's nice to meet you. And immediately sue you and Araka is like, he's so round and cute. Ah, have candy. <laughs> but then he immediately crushes it. <laughs> well, he has to make a point. It's like he has oh, to no. make the point. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm adorable, but this means serious business here. <laughs> I will not stand for this. It's a drug that destroys quirks. Oh, I crushed the candy. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, they establish uh, that uh, Tamaki, a.k.a. Sun Eater, uh, was able to recover from the drug that uh, disabled his quirk. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm back to normal now. He makes a cow hoof. (laughs) Oh, look at this fabulous cow hoof. (laughs) You know, if nothing else, I love love uh, Tamaki's, like, um, quirk, because I, I looked at that and I'm like, okay, that's something that's just took so much creativity to get that I've never seen before, ever that you can just eat something and then return to the animal of what that, that food came from. And that's very clever there. Yeah, the shape-shifting thing itself is like, okay, you've seen that before, but... Yes, the, but the the methodology of how that worked, yeah. Weirds up something that's already f- familiar to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aizawa talks about the uh, drug as well, because he says, it's different from my erasure uh, quirk. Mm-hmm. See... He explains it as, I am not attacking a person's quirk itself. What we call quirks are special additions to an ordinary body, or the plus alpha elements. Everything is plus in this plus world we live in. So he says, I temporarily stop those quirk factors from activating. I can't actually cause damage to them. 
We got Tamaki checked out at the hospital, and they said his quirk factors were damaged. Luckily, his body's natural healing was enough to fix the problem. So presumably, if enough of the drug is injected mm. into somebody, it would cause permanent damage. Yeah, I... I mean, I looked at it like a damage to like the nervous system, like a little bit. It might be okay, but if you're if you damage it enough, you're screwed. You won't be able to move it ever again. Yeah. That sounds about right to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nerve, exactly. Like a superficial damage, your body will heal it, but yeah, yeah, it's if you get your arm ripped off, then you can't heal that, basically. Yeah, or if you get hit in the spine or something. Yeah, I get you. Uh, so. Uh, and also, uh, Fat Gum says, you know, it's it's a bit difficult. It was, it, we would have been in a bind uh, because. Uh, see, the dart actually dis- dissolved, essentially, was destroyed because it, when it entered his body, and yeah. the gun was destroyed. But since one of the darts bounced off of Kirishima's body, we got our hands on the vi- on a vial of it. And Kirishima was like, go. I was useful! <laughs> yes! Um, and uh, so Fat Gum says, oh, and our analysis of it reveals something very disgusting. They found human cells and blood. So... We had theorized before that, oh, hey, that little girl that Overhaul is with has mm. all the bandages and stuff. Maybe bandages stuff is being taken out of her. It definitely seems as though uh, there is stuff is going in that direction. Which I'll admit, I'm not that I'm not a good Sherlock because I didn't I didn't come to that conclusion right away. They basically had to wait to spell that out. <laughs> so, so so later on, that asshole hero is like, oh my god, do we have to spell it out to you? And I'm like, yes, please, <laughs> could, could you, sir? <laughs> Just starts calling uh, one of the students teching. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, this is this is self aware now. Um. So uh, Sir Nidai says, "All right, yeah, the 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 leader is Chisaki Overhaul. Uh, Overhaul has the ability to both dismantle and restore. Dismantle a quirk that can destroy and then heal, and we have bullets that destroy quirks. And so Mirio and Deku have this big uh, oh, yeah. freak out. It's surprisingly intense honestly it is for the it's like a whole having. page and the the manga style shifts to more like just like a like they're breaking apart or like they're like the you know like a sketch kind of style it's and, like uh, it's like everything is kind of being removed from around them and is leaving them alone mm-hmm. in, a, in the world yeah like when your first girlfriend leaves you that's basically the same you know dish there <laughs> so anyways <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> let's just move past that so yeah, Mirio and Deku are, are really upset because they realize that uh, Overhaul's daughter is the source of all of this. And uh, But when all this is being discussed uh, amongst the other heroes and students, they're really freaking out. And asshole hero is like, uh, they're saying that he's turning his own daughter's body into these bullets and selling them on the black market. Uh and Night Eye says, oh, there's also all these uncertainties. We don't know this. We don't know that. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know what this could possibly... We don't have proof of what's going on here. We can theorize, though, what the, you know, extents of this plan could possibly be, and if the final version of these bullets could destroy a person's quirk permanently, uh, you know, you could do a whole bunch of stuff with it then. The consequences are very, very ridiculous. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, so Vacuum is, is really pumped up and ready to go, uh, asshole hero is like, if your kids just rescued the girl at the time, then everything would have been fine. So now it's like, like, dude, are you serious? Come on now. I think they already understood that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause they're not, they're not Mirio and Deku. are not feeling too hot about that. No, they're very, very much. They're criticizing themselves inside their own heads. Deku is but I'll like, tell you, I'll, you know, Deku is like, Oh, I was, I, how could I possibly think I could be the greatest ever hero? And yeah, Mir- but it doesn't Mirio's last like, for very long. Like they realize, like they they kind of messed up, but they immediately like catch themselves, get back up, and get motivated to like, okay, well now we definitely have to save that girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a very talky chapter of uh, My Hero Academia, yeah. but there's some uh, cool bits, and it's a very important plot moving forward. So, mm-hmm. And we still don't know what the hell the villain meeting was about. We introduced yeah, we an don't. entire other meeting yeah. after that one and then got through it. <laughs> it's, just like, it's like, okay, guys, do you want to see a really dark meeting between the villains trying to figure out how to take over the heroes? Or do you want to see, like, you know, the crime stopper meeting between the heroes where they discuss, like, the hierarchy of the layout of the criminal network in the city and where the drug cartels are? Yeah, the second one, totally. Yeah. But, why not? Uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Right. I, uh, I, I, I did. Okay, so 
Overhaul's daughter, I, I was like looking at this like, does she have like a particular quirk that can nullify quirks? And then they, that's why they put it in the bullets and they fired it off because well, I, I'm trying to understand ability, what the purpose is of... If Overhaul's ability is to destroy, can, then maybe his daughter has a variation it, on that, like a specialized, you know, destroy thing. So maybe that's what it has mm. to do with. Like it destroys yeah, something yeah, yeah. at a cellular and, level that's very specific. He could have done yeah, the same thing. Because the way this, I look, he could have done the same thing that Endeavor did, where he just had a bunch of kids to make sure that he got the one with the right combination of quirks that he wanted. That's kind of fucked up, but it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I was just looking at his quirk, like, okay, he can you know break down the cells in her body and create these dark things, but how would that necessarily stop a quirk unless she had something with that too? So. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the chapter. Um, I used to review My Hero Academia weekly, mm -hmm. and the reason I don't do it anymore is because I still love the story, but then you get chapters like this that are really long in dialogue, and it doesn't really fit with my kind of, like, reviewing style and stuff, but they're still really, like, interesting to go into. I'm still really into the story. It's just, um, yeah, it doesn't fit my style when I do the, like, the One Piece reviews or whatever, but, yeah. Are you still on that Kaminari is the traitor train? Um... I haven't even thought about that, that in a while, but <laughs> the last time I thought about that was yeah, he might have been kind of like a red herring, like more or less being kind of set up. But we'll see where that goes. I don't really I haven't really thought of someone else. What, what's your opinion on that? Uh, I'm on Hagakure. You hide the eyes, you hide the lies. <laughs> <laughs> I like see, I really like Hagakure. So I, I guess I'm a little biased there. I find her annoying, so. <laughs> oh, you you know, I don't know. I think I think she needs to have her moment to shine, and then you'll you'll be you'll turn around. I don't know. I didn't really care much for Kirishima at the beginning, and now he's like, I, he like it got rushed all of a sudden. Like all of a sudden, he went from being like this. Oh, okay, I'm not like a really well known hero in class one A, but then all of a sudden, all this stuff happens. He stops a criminal organization. He saved one of the darts. I'm like, oh, way to go, Kirishima! You're indispensable, and he's like, I am awesome. <laughs> I'm so useful, yeah. He's definitely gotten uh, brought into being one of the major supporting characters currently. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really playing up also his uh, inferiority complex. Um, I mean, but, uh, that's, I, I that's wish that I wish that we would get more from... I mean, Uraraka is going to be in on this whole thing, but you didn't Uraraka were supposed to be, like, the main part of that, and they've just kind of gone yeah. in the background see that's that's one of the problems we have with the series that has like 20 you know characters that make up the main cast but uh horikoshi i think that's the mangaka yeah my hero academia. yeah horikoshi does a great job at that because you know like okay well here's you know deku and, and you know and uh you know uh uraraka and stuff and here's the main cast and everything but they kind of like cycle through certain you know spots in the story like you know uh tokoyami here's his like spotlight you know and uh, all that stuff so, so far, they're doing a pretty good job of balancing it, I think. Um, sometimes that means heroes are going to be kind of shoved to the wayside. But aside from that, you know, it's it's pretty it's a pretty good balancing act he's doing. Hmm. All right. So from that, let's move on to another s series that has a very large cast. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yes. It's Fairy Tale. And we have, of course, a fucking figures. That when on the fucking week that Chris isn't here, we've got two chapters. <laughs> I mean, like, is this? The, it sucks. Also, that we never get two chapters of One Piece or two chapters of My Hero Academia. But every so often, we'll always get. For every any series, we're gonna get two chapters of. It's always gonna be Fairy Tale. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, five thirty-two and five thirty-three. So, and, and 532 has color pages, like three color pages. Yes, and start. people have... Jesus people Christ, have... how does Hero find the time? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's a conspiracy, but people have pointed out that, wait a second, are these different panels confirming the fan ships, comparing the pairings in the, in the series? That is all... something that I was wondering about, because it starts off, we get this flashback, which appears to be the time that Zeref and Mavis did it. In order to conceive, uh, what's his name? August. August, right. Yeah, in, in a pond, which I don't know if that, okay. I mean, a <laughs> little gross, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's an excuse for them to be naked, question mark? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. gotta so, still censor it. It's it's heavy on the fan service, but there are limits. Now, the chapter is titled, I Can No Longer See Love. And yeah, there's split panels that show primarily like established romantic couples 
yeah. in the series. There's Lucy and Natsu, there's Grey and Juvia, there's Levy and uh, and, and uh, fucking... Dajil? There's so many G names that I get confused sometimes. Hey, do, don't feel bad. I forgot who... Uh... I forgot who... Damn it! Deku's rival in My Hero Academia! Bakugo. <laughs> there you go! Jesus Christ! <laughs> there's... Okay. There's Ever and there's Elfman. There's and then, Urza and Gerard. There's Gildarts and Kana because they're father and daughter. And then there's I, I, Wendy and Sherry because... You missed, you missed Mira Jane and Loxus. I deliberately I just, passed over that so we could go over I, it. It's like... Wait a minute! <laughs> just didn't. Okay. Is sure. that a thing? Has it been a thing? <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you think about what Mira Jane's personality was before, you know, she thought Lisana died. She was like way more like back when they were like kids. That that is a personality that's more similar to Loxus. But I mean, like, I I don't I didn't know. Is there like a relationship there that I just didn't notice? I, I didn't uh, shit? <laughs> there's so many. There's so many couples in fairy tale there are freaking com- pointlessly unimportant characters in the story that <laughs> you would not know anything about if they weren't a couple with someone else like was it yeah. what's her name jenny from blue pegasus is a cut yeah. in a couple with someone else in the group i think, I think rin i think which i don't even know who the fuck that is <laughs> I think he's the guy that has the tanner skin in in Blue Pegasus, okay, guy, I believe I you. I think he's a snow. I think he's a snow. Wait, is he a snow mage? I don't even know. It doesn't matter. So it, it is. It is just kind of weird because, like, okay, here's all these that are very obviously like, okay, there's the established romantic couples. Then there's freaking Mira and Laxus, which is like, wait a minute. And then you get to the end, and it's like, is this where the romantic couples are supposed to stop? Because there's mm-hmm. Gildarts and Kana. It's like, all right, um. And then there's Wendy and Sherry, and it's like, hmm. Now, 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 Nick, let's not discriminate. Is it a different here. type of love that you're talking about now? <laughs> yes. But then you get the one odd duck in the group, which is, you know, it's uh, uh, Guild Arts and Kana, which, okay, mother and, I mean, father and daughter, but okay, everyone else is there's, apparently a There's couple. a weird way that their relationship is portrayed, too, that when that one oh. came up, I was just like, um, what you trying to go oh, for wait, here, no. hero? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're missing the bigger picture that is fairy tale. Clearly, the hidden message is it's all about the love that's in human beings. So these are all the characters that express love for each other. It's not all about as long romantic... as we have fairy tale, everything is fine. <laughs> it's not all about romantic love, you common plebs. Okay, whatever. It's not all about romantic love. You said after putting down like five romantic loves in a row. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, there was an Omeg chapter once of Fairy Tale where they uh, he- he- Hero uh, just literally draws uh, God Giel and Levy just like making out. It was like a dream sequence, but he still drew it. So yeah. they're an actual romantic couple now. You could just do that. Yeah, you really, could. You really could. Yeah, <laughs> they are pe- they are basically at the stage where they are actually like they fucking confess their love for each other. You might as well just have him make out all the time. Why not? Ma- Ma- Mashima's Mashima's cocklocking us, man. He's just like, no, sorry, you're not. Get- you're not getting it. I'll give you that. It's just like, like, look, as long as I can't just draw naked boobies, <laughs> then you will not. <laughs> um, he's like, I'm gonna ignite the fires to the fan fictions, but I'll let everyone else take it from there. I'm not gonna draw it. I'll let everyone else have their own conclusions. Fucking evil. Which whatever. Anyway, I guess we should talk about the actual chapter. Right. So Natsu wants to kick Zerus' ass. He's... Dragon Force. Uh, he's unleashed Dragon Force. He's going to punch Zeref really, really hard, and uh, Mavis gets in the way. And so Natsu's like, "You should get out of my way." And Mavis's like, "Let me talk to him." And Zerus's like, "Well, since you're in arm's reach now, oink." <laughs> I'm like, I think we're way beyond the talkie point at this point, Mavis. I mean, come on now. (laughs) Mavis says, wait, hear me out. I can release you from your immortal life. I have figured it out. And Zareth does pause for a second, but he says, no, no. I've I've literally tried every form of magic. I've been doing this for thousands of years. I think it's just 400, isn't it? Whatever. I've been doing this for thousands of months. Uh, So... (laughs) Um, Actually, I still think that would only be a (laughs) hundred. Continue. I'm sorry. So, if it's four hundred, if it's four hundred years, okay. Let's let's take a second. If it's four hundred years times twelve months is thousands of months. So fuck off. Twelve times four hundred is forty eight hundred. Okay, shit. I was wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Come on. That's. (laughs) 
So Mavis uh, points out because Zero says, there is no way that I can be defeated. Even End cannot defeat me. And Mavis says, well, then why are you afraid of Nakanologia? Uh-huh. And I, this is actually pretty clever, I think. I like this. I really did, because that was a question I had for a while. Like, okay, he's immortal, yet Acnologia is around. Why can't he? I Like, it, like best shot at killing yourself is probably Acnologia. Yeah. yeah. So Zero says, I fear Acnologia because I cannot die, I, but I cannot defeat him, not even as an immortal. He is here to end human history. Humanity will soon be destroyed, and the only ones remaining will be you and me, so toying with us could become his favorite ta- pastime. Yeah. We would, we cannot die, so we would be his eternal playthings. That's, yeah, that that's a really good point, Zara. <laughs> I, I mean, provided that Acnologia doesn't just straight up blow up the entire planet, but I guess he needs a place to live. <laughs> so, um, yeah, though, getting hunted by a dragon that you can never—I mean, like you'll never die, but he'll like, like flame your ass up like every now and then and you know you'll like have to suffer that a lot so yeah you, you would spend all of eternity in your own purgatory essentially yeah uh, uh, basically yes so so that was pretty clever i did enjoy that so he's like okay so i have to go with neo eclipse yeah and uh so he starts to absorb mavis's magic power uh not to is like oh no i will stop him kind of slow uh, i guess because uh, yeah, uh, that doesn't yeah. seem to work we cut away um, to the Blue Pegasus ship. Everyone is, you know, running away from Nakalolia because they can't suck him into the new eclipse or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, he says weirdly, he actually mocks them as he's chasing them, saying, As long as a dragon exists there, I will slay it. <laughs> I mean, you could just say you want to kill them, whatever. Can he shoot fire? He can shoot magical blasts of energy. Yeah, I guess like that a de- they're like a death laser or something, a laser. I guess like... they're just moving so quickly that he can't reliably hit them. I yeah, I guess doesn't even give it a shot though. That's kind of weird, but whatever. So, um, what's her name? Uh, ancestor to Lucy. Lucy's Anna, ancestor. Anna. 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 Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it. it that's Anna. it. Yeah. I'm sorry. We've had so long to get to know this very important, intriguing character. I was gonna say Layla, but no, that was Lucy's. That mom. was her mother. <laughs> yeah, that was her mother. They yeah. all look. They all look the same. I'm. A, I'm sorry. They. It's by design, but they do. <laughs> they. They kind of. No, I mean, like Anna has a few more lines under her face, although it's sometimes you can't see them. Like they're really hardly apparent half the time. But that's that's pretty much it. So, Just go by their clothes for the most part. Um, Joel says he's going to buy some time for them to get away. I don't think he ever actually gets this chance. But... Well, yeah, I don't think he does. Uh, meanwhile, back with Mavis, uh, she's still getting her magic power absor- absorbed, and that's was apparently gone from trying to stop Zeref to just saying, stop that. Yeah. I guess we're meant he, to he interpret might... that he's moving towards him. But it doesn't look that way. Yeah, because last, because in the last panel before what we saw, it was like he was rushing toward them, and now he's just like standing there with like an expression, like "Get the hell away from her!" I don't, I can't actually figure out what to do here. Actually, it looks like Zeref is like groping Mavis a little bit, but whatever. I it mean. is, it is somewhat sexual uh, <laughs> yeah, the way that he's bit. got her. Um, but I don't know. A lot of the, a lot of the interaction between these two has been has little played bit. off of that deliberately. So. Mm. made all the worse by the fact Mavis it looks like a small child yeah. so yeah that doesn't help things very much <laughs> so Zareph says New Eclipse is a magic that uh, lets a person live their life over I'm going to return to my original self 400 years ago when I had a family when I had a beloved baby brother I will never become immortal I would just I will die just like anyone else it's too bad that we'll never meet but you'll probably live a much happier life having never met me so sorry Mavis it's and like, you know the space time continuum will be ripped to shreds, yeah, 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 and paradoxes yeah. and crap. But that's you know I didn't consider that point. <laughs> so, um, and then he also says, "But also, I'll make you a promise. Long before he becomes as powerful as he is now, I will kill Acnologia. I'll ask Natsu to fight him with me. I will see to it that he is no threat to humanity's future. So I will bid farewell to this world." Okay, and- so still kind of a douche nugget, but I mean that was nice. Yeah. Uh, but Mavis says, "No, you mustn't erase this world. This world is where I, where I met you." 
And not just so precious, Nick. So, <laughs> this this relationship between the two of them has been very weird, honestly. I know. I I can't tell because it, it there it throws in these moments that it's that outside of context would I think be very sweet and really play yeah. to the fact that these two really did love each other. But it's got that kind of Joker Harley thing to it. It, it does. Where yeah, if you look at it all in context, it's like. Yeah, I really shouldn't be... You shouldn't be trying to get me to root for this couple, though, is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> he is a I, world-destroying I, evil maniac. I, I mean, on the surface, it's like a really interesting relationship they've had. Like, they're two immortals. You know, one is, you know, the Black Wizard, and one is, you know, Mavis is very much full of light a lot of times. And, like, they're immortals, but they fell in love with these immortal bodies. And, and just, like, okay, that's kind of pure and innocent. But then, you know, you have moments where Zareph basically just uses her as means to an end a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so, Zareph drops Mavis. She falls to the floor. And, uh... Sarah says, she's not dead. I just sucked all the magic out of her. I bet you did. Mm. Sucked sucked her dry. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so he unleashes Fairy Heart. Huge explosion of magic goes across the freaking landscape out, uh, through the buildings outside. And uh, Zareph has gone all one-winged angel at the, at the end of the first chapter. Yep. Uh, he is now Zareph the White. Uh, With with infinite magic power. Yeah, totes. Yeah. To totes, buddy. Oh, wait. Okay, so wait. You mean to tell me that the cliffhanger of a fairy tale chapter ended with a really cool setup for a really cool design of a power up? I've never seen this before, Nick. I think this is going to lead to a I've really I've never cool seen that payoff. happen in manga in general. Well, it happens in fairy tale a lot, and he always drops the ball pretty soon. Uh, case in point, God Serena. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude. Dude, look, I was I, I wrote like a five page, you know, essay on notes. I got a video all set up, ready to go. It's just that with it ending, I was going to do it a few weeks back, but I'm like, you know what? It's it's ending soon. I'm just going to wait till it's all done. And then I'm just going to launch into like a whole hour long video discussing it. So, I mean, just God Serena. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been analyzing so many different like tropes and stuff in this story. It's it's more than I care to. But here we are now. Um, so I, I, I mean, I, I'll bring this up now, I guess. Like his whole thing is to travel back in the past in the Neo Eclipse. So I guess, yeah, he's got to get back. He's got to get back to the past, you know, Samurai Jack. But I mean, like, I guess the infinite magic power Zareph the White, I guess that's necessary for it. But we'll, we'll see next chapter, I guess, what he does with oh, it. Oh, yeah, I guess we will. <laughs> Right. Oh, Chapter okay. we'll 533. <laughs> we'll see you back here in two seconds. Uh, yeah. Future Matt has to deal with... Oh, shit. <laughs> so, we see a lot of the aftermath of the explosion of magical power that Zareph uh, sent out when he transformed. A whole bunch of the members of Fairy Tale are kind of picking themselves up, talking about a couple of different things. Nothing really especially important. We see this one scene of like a bunch of different people just worrying about a bunch of different other people. Um... And uh, Makarov's still dead, so that's, he's still dead. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's consistent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we cut over to uh, Lucy and Gray and Happy. They still have the end tome with them, and uh, so Gray's like, "What the hell is this anyway?" And Lucy says, "It's high level organic link magic. I think yeah. that this book is connected to Natsu through an organic link. Maybe we could overwrite the words." Yep. Yep, yep. This is um this is what this is. So let me translate that for you. And Holy then he shit. lived happily ever after. Let me translate this. Holy shit, great. We just discovered the script of fairy tales. <laughs> we can rewrite anything we want now. Man, there's a lot of pages dedicated to me being in sexual compromised positions, huh? Yeah, like, oh man, there's that time I showed my ass and there's no time that my boobs got bigger and here's that time this is all over the place. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so Gray doesn't have a problem with the mere concept of, oh, sure, we can just rewrite the book. Why not? Yeah. What he just points out is, we opened up the tome and all those words came out. And that was just one page. It's just a fraction of what's there. How can we possibly manage to rewrite the whole thing? And Luce's like, 
I'm sure there's a page in there that will save Natsu. We have to find it! <laughs> and then Natsu gained all the power in the world. Like, I wonder if that's all you would have to do is just write that in there and that would become the case. I, I don't know how this how does this work. And then this is just going to end with Zeref being like, I am going to give up my powers and go back home forever for no reason! <laughs> oh, man. So... Natsu is facing off against uh, one-winged angel Zeref. He charges in to attack him because, of course, he does. Uh, loses a big attack, huge punch, huge explosion that wrecks a big wall and uh, a big hole in the wall of the I guild. I think that's the same attack he used to kill that god that one time. Probably. Yeah, yeah the demolition fist, yeah. Uh, and he could completely obliterate Zeref, just completely blown away. There's no trace of him. And uh, Natsu's like, ah, sorry, Gramps, I wrecked the guild again. <laughs> Along with Zeref. Yeah, he's, to he's totally dead. It's really easy. Uh, but magical particles come flowing back together. Uh, they reform Zeref's body. And he says, this is the pow power of Fairy Heart. Space and time, everything is mine to control. It is a limitless, eternally renewing power. You could call it the okay. pinnacle of all magic. Awesome. Why don't you use it for what you said you were going to use it for? Why You're going to put a hole in your chest first. Ah! Yeah, why, yeah why, why are you still even here, bro? What the fuck? <laughs> why is and, it always just like, I have the power to remake everything? It's like, at, I, eventually yeah. we're going to get to the point where it's just like, whatever. I've seen that like 50 times yeah, already. Yeah, it's, it's like when you say that you give your character an incredible OP ability that like, oh man, how could this possibly be countered? It's like, oh, I'm writing myself into a corner and I have to figure some bullshit way on how they can counter that. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, oh, he does get one last uh, burn in on Natsu, uh, pun intended, because he's like, earlier you said sorry to Gramps. Sorry, but he's already dead. And that's the end of the chapter. Uh, he has shoved his hand through Natsu's chest, left him mortally wounded, and uh, that's it. Uh, yep. Significantly more just big action beat chapter than the previous one. And mm -hmm. it definitely seems as though the two chapters were designed so that the second one would be a lot shorter to go through. Overall, honestly, given the usual standard fairy tale sets, I thought these two chapters were actually pretty good. Um, um... There are things to nitpick in them, definitely. Uh, but I was definitely getting drawn into it with the first time that I was reading through it, so I don't actually have too much bad to say about them. You know, honestly, yeah, I, I like the reason why, like, Acnologi and Zeref, I thought that was a really clever idea. Um, I even like the aesthetic of White Zeref. It's just that every single time this happens, I'm always setting myself up for disappointment. Um, probably the one issue that it wasn't an issue right now but it's probably going to be later on is how they're setting up that end tome to be kind of like a, a sort of like a deus ex machina how just like oh i'll just and, and natsu got a hole blasted in his chest no he didn't and then he's just <laughs> he's good to go um uh, which might very well be the way they heal him for all we know i mean so but in terms of just these two chapters yeah i mean aside from a few nitpicks i thought they were pretty solid it definitely seems as though it's going to be just reality bending powers versus reality bending powers. It seems yeah, to be got, you, in that direction. You gotta love when the climax of your shonen manga just resorts to that. It's great. Yay! Uh, I'm still not convinced this is the final arc, though. So, you you don't think it's ending? I've got this. I don't know. It just feels like Zeref will be defeated here and then Agnologia later. That's just how it feels I, to me. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure they were going to show off the and like they're leading up to the end. I, I don't even announced it was ending soon. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it were. I just get this feeling, you know. So yeah. Okay. But anyway, let's just move on. I'll get through yeah. Food Wars uh, fairly quickly since yeah, you know, Food they're... Wars is the one is one of the two chapters I did not. Uh, I'm not caught up. I read the chapter, but I'm just not caught up with the actual series. So. So you probably don't know too much about what the hell is going on here and why uh, why there I, are I students really... why there are students that are just in a jail cell. And... You know what? I saw that and I was like, oh, okay. Here's the one team and the translation I read called one team the Rebel Alliance. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. And then you get to a bunch of students just in cages. Like, what? What the fuck? Isn't this like a cooking competition? Why are they like? Are they actually being held captive? Like, are they gonna die if something goes wrong? Like, what the hell? <laughs> So, it's Soma versus Kinokuni still. The dishes have been presented. 
This dish is all about the judges who got their big introduction in the last chapter, trying out Kinokuni's dish. Mm -hmm. um, Soma is perplexed because uh, I don't know their names yet, but the female judge who is a dragging the books around she's just got this table set up behind her which is just oh yeah i got all of the all the past versions of the wgo for reference just brought them all along here you know why not yeah um and uh, so they start eating um and uh, they're slurping up the soba having a good time and they're like oh yes uh, we must do but uh, now i should try a little bit more in order to make sure to properly analyze it ah, my bowl is empty <laughs> and one of them specifically says, Who took my noodles? Who hid them from me? <laughs> and someone's like, No one took your noodles. They, it, you just ate them. We did? Oh, wow. I mean, I don't I don't know if this is a common problem, but do you get insanely hungry when reading this manga? Sometimes, yes. Yes. <laughs> It's not the it's not the noodles themselves that do it. I think that the that the shrimp the, the, looks great. Yeah, the shrimp looks so damn good. There was even one character, have no idea who his name is, was like, "Oh my god, I'm eating freaking soba tonight. This looks good." Yeah. I think that it's actually It might be one of the one of the dude bros. The dude so. bros. Yeah, the dude bros. Yeah, yeah. It's... So, um we get they go through is like, "Oh, this is what the temper is. Sure. Uh, blah, blah 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 blah. They're really wrapped up in the taste. Uh the judge uh, pulls out a tome in order to analyze it. Um they really play up, ah, this speaks to the power of the Edo Suba noodle tradition and to just how much time Kinokuni Senpai has devoted to her craft. And then there is a random the girl who leapt through time reference in the middle of the chapter. Is that what that was? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just flat out like a, a parody of the poster for the girl who leapt through time, the, the movie. And it's yeah. called, it's referred to as the Soba that leapt through time. Because. Uh, yep. Food Wars is a weird series. Yeah, I've, well, I've, I've noticed, but, uh, yeah. I thought it was, I mean, I've always liked the art of this series. I thought the art was already really solid there. Um, it's just, I haven't got caught up to it, yeah. And, uh... I yeah, I mean, after they've gotten to taste their dishes, Kinokuni is like, "Aha! This is what I am capable of." Well, Ishiki, what do you think of that? And won't you take back your words now, saying that I would lose? And uh, someone's like, "Hey, you know, I've spent a whole lot of time perfecting my dish too. So take a look at my soba noodle dish." And he serves up his fried yakisoba dish, and uh, that's where the chapter ends. Ah, oh, that looks so damn good. But it looks okay. good too. Food! It looks delicious, yes. It does. Um, so I guess Soma's in a competition with this other, like, chick right now, and they're, you know, like, I, I, I guess, just give me, like, a brief abridged of what the hell's going on right now. So, uh, there is this guy called Azami who took over the school uh, about a year and a half ago in publication. Okay. okay. And uh, so he's been laying out his own way for, for uh, people to do things and has said, if you don't follow my, my curriculum, then you're expelled, uh, essentially. Okay, and, so, uh, he's a, so he's a dick, okay. Right, so it's essentially as if you went to uh, a, a school for the creative arts and you were like, you can only paint this way. Like, Okay, I get you, yeah. And of course, because it's a food school, they're all a chef school, they're all about... Uh, you know, creativity in your dishes and all that shit, yeah. So, in order to... There, this is the last battle between the resistance movement against his administration. Uh, and uh, so it's a big team battle where it's uh, eight people on Soma's side against the eight remaining members of the Council of Ten. Okay. And, <laughs> uh... But uh, it basically boils down to a bunch of individual matches and kind of a, kind of a gauntlet-style thing. So who's winning so far? If this is the this last is the match. first match. Oh, this the is the first battle. match. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, there are three that are going on concurrently with each other at this time. Okay. And uh, so Soma and Kinokuni are just the first that are getting to present their dishes. All right, I see. All right. So yeah, 
Um, it was a, like, it was a pretty ahead. all right. Yeah. It was a pretty all right chapter overall. The thing that honestly just stands out the most though is just the girl who left her time reference. It was right there in the middle of the chapter. <laughs> I've never seen the movie, but neither have I. I. I I've seen many references to it. I think there was even a video game once about it or something. Huh. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, is that what that's from? I guess. Kind of. Yeah. All right. Okay. So next is Ooh, Dr. Do Stone. Dr. Stone. So, th yeah, this is, uh, this is a new one uh, for you. I, I, I read it all today, and uh, out of the two I had to read today, I have to say I probably enjoyed this one more. Uh, I always tend to like manga that are more on the, uh, they always try to like do like logically, like here's how to do this, and it actually ties back into like real world science and everything like that. Um, I guess it falls under the purview of like sci-fi, I guess a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed this series, I really do. So this is chapter seven. Yeah. The Gunpowder Adventure. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Senku is leading uh, our other two heroes down uh, a path to try and get the chemicals uh, necessary in order to create gunpowder so that they can shoot Sukasa. Or so yeah. um yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just uh, that's a great. Come on, guys, let's go on a little adventure so we could get this. We can make a gun to shoot somebody. They don't actually explain how they're going to make the gun yet, by the way. It's no, just no, the bear. just the gunpowder. Just the gunpowder. Let's just start simple with this, I guess. I mean, you can, do a lot, you can do a lot with gunpowder in general anyway. You know, make explosions and stuff. Yeah, but they, they specifically, uh, I think it was Senku that specifically said, we're going to create a gun. Like, humanity created <laughs> attention. Okay, like, you can make a gun without metal, I guess. Like, the Chinese discovered this shit a while ago. They had, like, cannons and stuff. But they think the easier method would just be able to just make a bomb and throw it at them. I guess that would be the better method. Powder bombs, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so, Senku has a sextant. And he's, yes. like, explaining how, do you, how he's using it. He's like, oh, it has been 35.97 seconds since the sun rose today. And Yuzuri is like... Or or no, not thirty five point nine seven, thirty five thousand nine hundred seventy seconds. Yeah. And, and Yuzuri is like, how did you just count like that? I just like, oh well, he counted to over one hundred billion or something like that. What were your statues? So a trillion. <laughs> well, he it was like over a trillion. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, this is no problem for him. Uh, and Senku, you know, already knows where they want to go. Uh, and uh, he says that, you know, I think that we're near Kamakura, but I don't know what our exact coordinates are. Uh, and so uh, Ta Taiji's like, okay, well, we could use the building as a landmark. And Senka's like, well, all the buildings will have rot away. So, nope. Nope, sorry. But uh, Yuzuriha manages, uh, happens to notice, hey, there's like uh, no plants growing in this spot here. And uh, they actually do have a, a landmark. And Senka's like, ah, we are 35.19 degrees north by 139 by 32 degrees east. Because, you know, he can just know that shit. Yeah, it's, it's, I understand he's a smart dude. But he explicitly, like, he knows the exact Latin launch of this one location that he did not know was going to be relevant before the event occurred. He just happens to know this exact Latin launch for this exact, like, landmark. But okay, fair enough. <laughs> And uh, so they come across this uh, massive statue of a Buddha, and uh, we get we get a little flashback to Yuzuri his past, where apparently she had the same fucking headband as she does now. And uh, that's what that was. I thought it was a freaking. I thought it was like a headphones or something. I'm assuming <laughs> that it's a. I'm assuming that it's a headband until proven otherwise. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. I guess. Um, we get a little flashback to... from her perspective, where she visited when she was a kid, which is kind of cute. Yeah, and she starts to cry mostly because you know this whole you know three thousand years have passed. That's it's kind of like she just it had to deal with that like a few hours ago. She just woke up and just got thrust into all this. So kind of nice that they're taking time to actually address that she's not really acclimated to this yet. Yeah, she's because she's crying and she kind of puts on like a brave face even while she is crying because she you know this really drives home for her seeing this statue. And the fact that it's so aged and uh, broken down, like it really uh, did hap did happen. You know, this really is mm -hmm. thousands of years in the future, and my mom and my dad and everyone knew they're they're all gone. 
And it's really weird because she's saying this while she's smiling, but she's very clearly broken up about it. There is also a bit of a... This moment is, is kind of broken up by, by Taiji freaking out. I was like, who made you cry? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> is it that? Is that that big guy? I'll fight him. Is that just the Buddha statue? Oh, okay. Well, Taiji is kind of a Buddhist, isn't he? Because he's, you know, he prays occasionally and stuff. So he's kind of like, I think, into that. Buddhism is a pretty popular religion in Japan. Yeah, so it's, it's Buddhism and uh, Shinto, I think, are the two biggest yeah. ones. Yeah. And atheism. <laughs> Atheism is it? Fi- at- is it? Wow, I didn't. Well, know that. not atheism, but non-religious. There are a lot of people. Right. Like, some like fifty percent of the population is just not religious. So okay, yeah. Uh, so the reason that they were able to fa- to find all this is because you know, uh, the copper you know uh, affects it doesn't the it doesn't break it. down and it affects the area immediately around it. Like like I guess when it does break down, it like is poisonous to the plant life. So everything dies around it, and the actual statue doesn't erode the same way. And there's a cool moment, because Taiju is trying to romanticize this moment. It's like, look, this Buddha statue stood here for thousands of years, never rotting away. And Senku's like, that's because it's made of bronze, and it's very resistant to rotting. Well, but look, there's no plants rotting around it, so th- 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 this was a divine it, sign, it, so we would be e- more easily find it. No, no, the copper just seeped into the soil, and it's toxic for most vegetation. It's like, no, 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 it's Buddhism <laughs> is the one true faith. I've cracked the nut. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fair enough. And uh, immediately, Senku is like, "Hey, we can use all this bronze to make my t- to make more accurate tools." Thank you, and he just starts getting ready to carve it. Yeah, apart. just start breaking down the Buddha. And like, don't no. <laughs> it's like this is every man for himself at this point. Sorry, Buddha. And we get a bit of a montage of the group camping out. They find uh, you know some proper vegetation that they can eat. Uh, they mm-hmm. travel de- along, go down a river. Um, there's also there's even a little moment where they're going ah. to fucking bed, and Taiju won't go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Taiju carrying the raft down the river for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, eventually, Taiju notices, "Hey, Yuzuriha, you've still got some of your t- toes still have stone on them." And Yuzuri is like, "Oh, you know, I didn't want to bother anyone with it," and. and, and uh, Taiju, you know, just pour some more of their chemical compound on it to uh, free it. And yeah. talk a little bit about uh, the stone process, what happened with their bodies. Because uh, Senka puts out, you know, we've got these cracks on our face, yeah. but we're still alive, even though that yeah, little like damage they, occurred. Yeah, apparently, like, if of course, if you're broken up, because we've already established, if you're completely shattered and you use the potion, you will just can turn back into a corpse and you're, you're dead. But I guess if you have small, minute cracks on your body, it'll just, like, forcibly, like, seal it up, and you'll have these permanent scars, but that you won't be dead. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's a cool look, anyway. And, of course, fucking Yuzuriha doesn't have any scars on her face, because she's the she's the pretty girl. <laughs> yeah, she, she's the beauty of the manga. We can't have her. I mean, I don't know. I, I thought she would be, be fine if she had one, just for consistency, but whatever. I think it has to do also with the fact that her body was protected by the tree. Yeah, it was so. it was protected by the tree. So, you know, like uh, Taiju's was we don't really know what happened with Senku's, but Taiju's was like, you know, carried down river and everything and landed in that cave. So it probably yeah. suffered some, a little bit of, you know, superficial damage there. And uh, so while this is going on, uh, we cut over to uh, Shishio and uh, he's just. It's this great panel to cut over to him because, you know, we, we first it's, you know, a, a, a far out shot of their original campsite and then it yeah. zooms in and it's just this long panel of him. Like you could just freaking hear the drums in your in your in, in your head as, yeah, like, you know, as he's exactly. preparing his hunts to, to go on. He's got the oh, lion, man. the lion pelt around himself, crouching yeah. the ground, analyzing the footprints. And he figures it out, like, right away. He's right. just like, he's like, oh, it makes it seem like they left in a hurry. But no, I know they didn't. They're going to go, and he, he figures out they're going to this place to get uh, gum powder. Yeah. So, yeah. Chris and I were talking about, um, you know, the levels of intelligence for the three guys in the group. Because we know very little about Yuzuriha. So still, well, yeah, she was just revived. Um, uh, she seems like she's, you know, I don't know, I guess average intelligence as far as I can tell. But at the time, we were talking about, okay, Taiju's a fucking dumbass. Senku is absurdly intelligent. 
Sukasa seems like he's of roughly average to above average intelligence. Yeah, I would. Oh no, he's definitely above average intelligence. This chapter no definitely other, clinched it. There's just no like, way. In fact, it's it's even almost close to Taiju, and I mean, since <laughs> it's close to Senku in a sense, because he like he figures it out. Like, are they going to make gunpowder? What do they need for gunpowder? Will they need this thing? We're you know going to find out. And then he's like, that's one the location where it'll be nearest. That place. That's where they're going. And unlike. Unlike them, they don't need a sextant. He doesn't need a sextant or anything. He can, like, track them using, you know, the, the, his skills, and he can find them like that, so... This definitely really plays up his abilities overall. Because uh, we're, we're cutting back and forth between the group relaxing in some hot springs that they have found, which uh, Senko also says, hey, and also there's a chemical here, which we can use in order to make uh, black powder. And then he's just like, they're going to Hakone! I must stop them before Senku do does this! Exactly. This guy's getting just more and more... He, he's really been growing over the course of uh, this story since his introduction, just getting more and more ridiculous and more and more intimidating I, and evil -looking. I'm not sure how I like... I don't think I like Sukasa very much. <laughs> I mean, just like, from the moment he showed up, and he's just like, I'm a high school student, just punched a lion in the face. <laughs> and I'm like, okay then, that seems all right i'll deal with it it's a manga but then you have like he immediately understands the situation he's like oh okay well whatever i will hunt for you and we'll never like he immediately does this i'm like okay and it's just i i, I don't know i can't get a lock on him yet i don't know what it's gonna happen i don't know if it's gonna be like a moment where they actually kill him or if it's gonna be like he just they manage to keep him around and he turns over a new leaf i, I have no idea i can't get a beat on him yet He's still very enigmatic at this point. Yeah. So I do think that there's going to come a time where you really do come to grasp what kind of a character well, he is. But yeah. it is a little hard to, hard to figure him out at this point. So far, it's pretty much just like he's a kind of guy that reads the situation exactly and then acts accordingly. And like he'll know what to do. Like, okay, I've been frozen in stone. I have to punch lions. Sure. Oh, we have to hunt for food. Okay, sure. But then... He gets to the point where it's like, oh, well, I have to kill all these, you know, inferior humans so that the human race isn't corrupted. So I'm going to do that. Oh, these pi these people are now turning against me. Oh, I'm going to go kill them. He just comes to these conclusions like really quick. Very little dwelling on the situation. I get your point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, And that's the. and Yeah, I get your point, because when you have to think about a situation that and the internal monologue at that point can really reveal a lot about uh, somebody mm -hmm. you know yeah there you get into the reasons for why someone is doing something like that and also their approach to stuff when it's very quick and matter of fact then it's just kind of like okay well he's kind of perfect then i guess that's all i yeah, really know that's yeah and i don't like that kind of character but you know chapter seven we'll see where this goes mm. um but yeah so they arrive at the hot springs and they actually set up their own little dividing barrier well, of course and of course freaking taiju innocent ass taiju is the ones like we'll have a boy section and a girl section <laughs> just like um okay sure whatever i guess that's one step back to civilization <laughs> i wonder how our caveman ancestors had a hot spring adventure uh <laughs> nick i wonder how they did it i'm pretty sure they wouldn't have set up a boundary between guys and girls <laughs> Uh, all right. So let's move over to We Never Learn. Yeah. So this this series actually uh, premiered like two weeks before uh, Doctor Stone did. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird because it's behind Doctor Stone at this point because they just didn't pick it up as quickly. So right. I mean, with that being said. Uh, I really enjoy this is chapter six, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they're a little bit more uh, beyond that because I, I I read the entire sure thing because was... it was I, I really liked it. Um, before we get into this, I just have to throw this out there, just you know, just to let you know about my bias. I like Rizu; she's so freaking cute. <laughs> you know, I felt I felt like I I might tease by saying who's best girl for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's three it's of them, so you have. There's three of them, so there's a harem conversation, so you yeah, have to have a best girl. Who, who, well, who's yours? I think I like Rizu too. Honestly. Damn you! Well, because I fucking hate Aruka. She's annoying. Uh, um, and then Fumino is kind of like, eh. She's she's nice, but she's kind of standard. Yeah, and she's I do the innocent kind of clumsy girl, sort of, you know. I've always, I guess that I've always, in this type of series, kind of gravitated towards the more no-nonsense uh, kind of girls. Um, 
I don't usually do that, which I find it weird, but I, I uh, yeah, I don't know what it was there. Uh, you can just say it's because she's got the biggest boobs. No, 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 no. That's not the only reason. That's a She wears glasses, too. <laughs> There's more to her character than her breasts. <laughs> don't, I don't know, judging by the way that Aruka treats her, the, you, you I guess I, the... I, I, <laughs> well, that, it is... You've got big phone. tits, Ogata. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to like girls that have shorter hair and glasses, and then I think that's just that's it. Fine. It's pretty smart spec, so that's that. This is question six, or chapter six of We Never Learned. A genius's conception of modern technology is X. And we're okay. introduced to the chapter-long uh, problem, which is that Ogata's got to do an essay, an argumentative essay. And it's kind of odd because they're in high school, and you... It's sort of like the positional paper that you would have to do in, like, middle school, I think. I was think. thinking that, especially since this Very is, like... Very basic th- paper yeah, topic. This is, yeah, this is third year, and this is a Japanese high school. This ain't no yeah. bullshit. This is a Japanese high school. And it's just like, oh, I just have to do this really basic, like, intro, body, conclusion, pure, the kind of thing. We, we would even do those, like, a beginning in, like, fifth grade in, like, yeah, elementary yeah. school. And uh, unless they do this kind of thing like every week, but it's set up like they don't. This is just like a normal assignment that they have like a few weeks to do or days to do or whatever. I don't, I don't get it, but whatever. And all the other students in her, well, they do. They have a sense that, that each of the girls is completely clueless uh, in the mm-hmm. topic that they want to pursue, but is a specialist in the other. Yes, and, and you know they're getting freaking like zeros or single digits on their test scores and stuff. So I get that they're completely incompetent about. It. But it's weird because the way that uh, Yuga ends up introducing here is the basics of essay writing and all that crap. It's like he's in- he's explaining it to her and also explaining it to the audience. Yeah. So I... <laughs> maybe the Japanese don't write essays as much, Nick. Maybe they're I don't know. They're more based on mathematics and 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 chemistry and science and shit. I don't know. I guess it's entirely possible that that's the case. Or maybe, oh, but- or maybe the author just expects that. Well, I don't know why that would be either. When you think about, there must I- it must be like a high school, just like a high school thing that they start doing this in. If these, because yeah. you've got to think that like the key audience for a series like this would have to be like twelve to eighteen or something like that. Uh, around there. Yeah. So this, this has to be a, for the sake jump. of like this the younger. Jump, correct. Yeah. Right. So this has to be like for the sake of the younger edge of uh, people who are reading this series. Oh man, I can't wait till they get to the chapter where they explain how to write a, a scientific report in, in all the context there. If you've ever had to do that, no. holy shit. Only a couple of times, thank God. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they break that down. Like, I remember I got in trouble just because the layout of the cover page wasn't accurate. Yeah. So, I mean, they're really... They're like, although I do love what uh, Rizu does here. She Because Yiga brings up, like, um, well, have you tried entering it before? And Rizu's like, oh, I've tried entering them before, but I immediately get them rejected. And what she does is literally just, like, here's my topic. I have no interest in this topic. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, that's, you have to redo this. And she's like, I don't understand, but I don't understand. <laughs> I can't talk about something. I don't want to. She's got a point. <laughs> well, th- there, well, you know what? I, I mean, okay. There's a lot of stuff in high school that I had to do that I didn't want to do. But the one thing I, I thought I still did, and I understand why I had to do it, but the bullshit thing was um, page lengths. Like this has to be eight pages long or whatever. I'm just like, you'll get how long I think I could talk about this subject. I'm not going to draw it out longer than I can, but you know, that's yeah. me. That's why they tell, God, I, I remember that they eventually proposed that eventually one of my teachers came up with the, just, just said like, you need to just have a whole bunch of source material to draw from and just introduce a whole bunch of topics to explain where you came with your point. I'm just like, that's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> man. If I can explain my topic in two and a half pages, the other four and a half are just going to be completely, it's just going to be fluff material. I mean, I could give you four and a half pages of bullshit material. I'm pretty good at that, but I don't yeah, think that's that what was, you would want. That's how they, that's how they enforce it. It was like, no, you can't just do fluff. You just have to Damn have it. a lot to talk about. And it's like, God, I don't want to though. I want to go play video games. <laughs> I guess my high school didn't have that, that position. on. Well, one of my English teachers didn't. Because I I, did, I gave her a lot of fluff material, and she just... Oh, this wasn't my English teacher, teacher who said this. This was, like, my history teacher, so... Oh, okay. I, I was in an AP English class in my senior year of high school, and that lady, Mrs. Hosteller, she 
was pretty chill with it. She's just didn't set lengths. She's just like, write it as long as you can write it and I'll grade it based on what you think. You, and she was, she was awesome. So she kind of understood it, but, um, yeah, this is, this is not something I'm used to. <laughs> so you guys says, you know, like, okay, when you're doing this essay, you know, it should be helpful to, it'll be helpful if you make short, concise arguments, you express a unique point of view and Reese is like, but I don't want, to, I don't have anything to say about the topic though. I don't care about this topic. She gets a text, though, at that point from uh, Aruka, and she's like, I'm not from swim practice, and I don't have any work, so I'm going to go to karaoke. You want to join me? And he's like, no. Picture of her at karaoke, and then, like, the, you know, and then she shows up, like, literally three panels later at his house. Because Reza says, I'm a, I'm studying at Yuiga's house. No. Just immediately fucking teleports there. Uh... And Ruka's like, hey, what a coincidence. I was just on my way to ask Narayuki for some help. <laughs> so, <sighs> she's a straight up stalker then, essentially. It really did. She's yeah. She's gonna get like I get the feeling she might get just get creepier and creepier as this series goes on. I don't know. Have you dude, have you read beyond this? No, I have not, no. Okay then. Well, let's All just right. continue onward. I like uh, I like Rizu's expression though, when she gets the text. Like maybe that's another reason I like really when characters get really unique expressions and stuff. Oh, there was another manga. It only lasted like six months. I think actually it was because of you. It was uh, Koisome Momiji or something like that. That's, Koisome Momiji. That, it was about. I actually read that. Yeah, it was about. It was, yeah, it was about like autumn leaves and a play and a lady. But anyway, there was a lady in there and she had a really unique facial expressions all the time. And I thought she was an interesting character. It was canceled after like 20 chapters. Well, yeah. But that's uh, that's the big thing for me, like the character expressions. But a anyway. lot of romantic comedies get canceled very quickly. So, yeah, that's. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those cases where because Shonen Jump does this where, you know, it's like, OK, we have to have, you know, this type of series, and this type of series and this type of series. Nisekoi, you know, after it ended, they're like, OK, we've got to find our next romantic comedy series. So, yeah. If this one does end up getting canceled, you're going to see another one very quickly afterwards. Yeah, so it's more of a matter of, I guess, uh, quantity over quality, I guess, in this case. It's just like, one's gone, we just pick another one off the conveyor belt. Pretty much. So... Da, 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 so... Uruka's, like, very transparent about the fact that she just wants to spend time with you again because <laughs> Reese is doing because she's like, Oops, I forgot my study supplies, dude! Yeah, 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 yeah. Did um, you touch my man? So all of a sudden the power goes out, and uh, you, I like how I love Yuiga's reaction because he's like, "I'm sure I paid the electric bill this month." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, the, "Come on, it, it's it's kind of sad because he has to." He's like, "Oh yes, that's right. He's poor as shit. Oh, yeah. that's kind of sad." But uh, they quickly realize, "Oh hey, the street lights are out. All the all the neighbors' power is out, so it's a blackout in the area." And Uruka's like, "Oh well, hey, this will be exciting. It's a blackout." <laughs> And, uh, but Reza's just like, what's the big deal? It's just a blackout. But she's like kind inching of, closer to Yuiga. <laughs> just kind of brushing up against him. And Yuiga's like, are you afraid of the dark? No, not even one pycometer. She's still bleeding up against his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. And because uh, their phones are shit, Uruka and Ogata's phones run out of power immediately. Well, I mean, to be fair, they are high school girls, so they're probably on their phones 24-7, so that actually kind of makes sense a little bit. Um, but I actually am just... This this chapter just, like, increases the obliviousness a little bit from Yuiga's perspective. Oh my god, it's so ridiculous. Because yeah. <laughs> Ogata... They're left completely in the dark, so Ogata is grabbing onto his... on the sleeve of his hoodie... And Dude, so, you are the luckiest motherfucker on the planet. So a, he quickly realizes with her, like, okay, she's clearly scared. Uruka's like, hey, it looks like Rizu is getting really cozy with Narayuki. Hmm, maybe I should act like I'm scared too. And then she's like, okay. And she kind of goes, uh, I'm the, so scared. The expression on her face, though, looks like <laughs> something else. It looks like she's like heavily panting, like oh, I'm so scared. Oh. I'm like, okay. And so <laughs> Yuga's Yuri... just like, hey, what's up with you? <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just staring off into space with these two girls like holding onto him, like uh, abort, retry, ignore. I <laughs> cannot cannot load. What am I supposed to do here? So. So he likes, all right, let me show you how to DIY a candle. Here you go. 
And yeah, he, he puts together a few different things, uh, gets gets a makeshift candle going, and uh, Yuga's like, huh, I can't believe that Takimoto's afraid of the dark too. Even though she's, she, Ruka's just there going like, mm-hmm, get to touch him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he makes an oil lamp for them. And uh, Ogata is kind of mystified because she's like, huh, it's kind of, it's sort of like a birthday party. And Yuga's like, yeah, it does. No, no, shut up. Can't feel emotion. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I was expressing an emotion there. No, 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 no. It's against my character at this moment in time. And uh, Yuga says, you know, electricity is great, but every now and then it's nice to be able to gather around a tiny light in the darkness. I think it brings people closer. And uh, Ogata says, uh, yeah, uh, maybe. Nah, nah, nah. Like the music cues up in the background. This is the lesson of the day. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Um, and Uruka, dumbass that she is, is like, how long will this light last? <laughs> Blows it out immediately. And uh, they're <laughs> left in the dark. And uh, they're left stumbling around. And the implication here is that as they're groping around in the dark, Yuiga accidentally gropes around in the dark because the lights suddenly come back on. The electricity comes back on and they're left like with Uruka and uh, Rizu just kind of like going, "Hmm." Uh, I I don't know what, what? And Yuiga's like, what's wrong guys? (laughs) Uh, No, not nothing. No, no, Rizu's like the absolute worst I'm like, uh, okay. She's got almost like her her eyes look like targets, essentially. Yeah, they're they doing the ring on thing that a lot of characters do. Big moms do that in One Piece occasionally. I don't know really know what the implication is. <laughs> so, Ogata takes her leave immediately, and Yuga goes like, "Oh no, you got to do your work." And I was like, "Nope, bye." Bye. No, nope, they're not doing it. Sorry. But uh, he talks with her the next day, and Ogata's like, "Oh yeah, my my essay was approved." And I couldn't have done it without you, so thank you. And you was like, oh, okay. What did I even do? And we actually get a, a, a glimpse of the teacher looking over the essay. And, you know, there's this whole there's this whole thing, which is, you know, pretty standard. It was like, I took it for granted, but now I realize that it allows people to maintain proper... Now I realize that such technologies allow people to maintain proper space from one another. But there are some jerks out there who take advantage of the darkness to misbehave. Just thinking about it ticks me off. It's like she just like like she starts out soft, but it just it devolves into a rant, you know. And I do like how she took inspiration from Yuga's speech to then take the opposite stance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool that's a cool little twist on it. I'm still confused by the joke that he apparently just like grabbed him in the dark, given that I, he's um, so ignorant about. Because it would be one thing if he was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," but he literally just doesn't realize what happened somehow. He, yeah, he's very oblivious, and then I just realized, wait a second, maybe, you know, the title of the manga is We Never Learn. It makes sense for Rizu and for Mino, but maybe that's the thing that Yuga has to get. He's like, we never learn. You never get, like, a freaking message. And wasn't... Here's the thing that's weird, though. Wasn't it, like, the last chapter where uh, Takemoto and Rizu, like, like he, she just, like, gropes her out of nowhere, like, yeah. grabs her boob? Yeah, and so... They, it happened again in this chapter, but they're way more freaked out by it. So it was something else, probably. Um, I don't, I don't know what that implied. Like they were, yeah. Maybe they ended up grabbing each other. I, I don't know. It seems because uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I think that it is meant to be that he was looking around for a liar and he ended up grabbing onto them. But yeah, I don't know how the fuck you can possibly be that ignorant to not realize it. But oh well. This was a oh, I, this was a pretty oh, enjoyable chapter, though. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. You, wait, so was it Yuiga that accidentally groped them? That's, I think, what the implication's supposed oh, to be. Oh, okay. I thought the implication was they groped each other by accident. I considered that okay. as a possibility. Huh. That would make more sense for why he didn't know what was going on. We need to we need to do a popular a poll on this. We need to figure out you know who groped who. This is something that needs. <laughs> who study. is the phantom groper? <laughs> Leave a comment below. <laughs> But yeah, it is making more sense that you... Yeah, because Yuiga was completely oblivious, though, so I'm like, nah, that couldn't be it, because he's not that stupid, is he? <laughs> well, like, I'm looking, he didn't... Well, he certainly didn't seem to know why the hell Uruka was grabbing him, so... I'm looking, I'm looking for a small plastic lighter. Oh, I touched something very soft and squishy. Oh, that must have just been something else. Oh, there's the lighter. <laughs> oh, whatever. 
All right. Want to move on to the next? Can you hear uh, me? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, oh, okay. I was just trying to see if the message was important. I don't even fucking know who it is. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask if that was like work or something. Yeah, you should probably take that. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, just in case. But anyway. Okay. Actually, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to take a closer listen. Can you start off on The Promised Neverland? <laughs> Actually, you know what? I love The Promised Neverland. All right. Okay, you can do that. All right, I'm taking the reins here. Okay, well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Techie 101 Reviews The Promised Neverland. So, um, uh, I get asked a lot about this uh, series. Uh, I get, I'm just going to pull it up here just so I have it for reference, but I get asked a lot, like, do you read The Promised Neverland? It's really good. And I haven't gotten to reviewing it yet simply because um, I usually wait until we're about 50 chapters in and we're nearing the end of the Escape from the Grace Fieldhouse arc here now. So I feel like I might actually start covering this uh, semi-regularly. But um, anyway, so this will be chapter 36 here which continues the escape from the Grace Field house uh, from Plantation 3. And are you back, Nick? I think a guy just tried to get me to come have sex with him. <laughs> okay, buddy. Well, if you want to get off, I can take the reins for this. <laughs> I'm not going to try to he cock was, This, this random guy is just like, hey, I'm just partying here. There's a girl who loved to get together with a married couple of it. What the uh, fuck? Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so if it's a wrong number, I would just fuck. I would go around play with it. That's what I usually do when I get wrong numbers. I just like, oh, this is a unintentional hilarity here that could ensue. <laughs> um, but no, I just uh, I just didn't take really the you just take the yoga approach. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? They're like, I want to have sex with you. I don't get it. What? <laughs> um, you're, you're turning down sex for manga, freaking nerd. Okay, so um. I only got, like, the first, like, page into it, so, you know, we can just right. start from there. Chapter 36, I uh, don't know what it's called, though, because it's not Action, telling me the Action, part five. Oh, yeah, execution, yes, part five. Uh, yeah, so I'll just finish up what I was saying, and we can get into it. So we have cool. the, the kids all running along the side of the wall. They're trying to escape from the plantation here. The alarm has been sounded. All the daemons are getting ready to go and make their move. Of course, they're going to be moving toward the one way that they think is out of the plantation, and that's the main bridge. Uh, so it's kind of like a big, intense moment, like, oh, shit, how are the kids going to... This this turns into a really different kind of manga here all of a sudden, because we went for, like, so long with just, like, okay, we just got to figure out how to outsmart, very methodical, but really still grounded in reality. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, right. holy shit. There are demons. There right. There are demons <laughs> trying to kill us. There are supernatural beings that can kill us, and we cannot fight them because we are children and we will die. So we need to figure out some way around it. So here it goes. The final game of tag begins. Right. So, uh, yeah, we've got the kids running along the freaking wall. And uh, Emma says, all right, we're not actually going to the bridge. And Ray's like, yeah, because Ray says, hey, the, the alarm sound is they're going to cut us off the bridge. And Emma's like, yeah, that's why we're not going there. We're going to cross over to the other side of, the, of this pit. And Ray's like, are you serious? <laughs> um, but we get this narration that explains from his perspective okay, everyone would think that the only way you could escape would be via the bridge, not the cliff, it's just impossible, mom and the demons think only the bridge is, is a possible escape, so that's why we'll escape through over the cliff and uh, this is established in Norman's note, his plan, because mm. Norman's thought of fucking everything in this note that he's left for her so he says, okay, if you have two months to prepare, if you get all the supplies ready, you can do it. And we see that Don has prepared a, a grappling hook, a rudimentary grappling hook in using, uh, I guess, still bed sheets and yeah. uh, rocks. Yeah. And uh, he manages to do it. He manages to get a good uh, grip on one of the branches on the uh, other side of the cliff uh, Batman's the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah, he you know gets a he gets specifically a coat hanger and uses that as a zip line across the rope that uh, he has set up. Which once again, side. rather clever. Yeah. yeah, rather clever. I mean, I mean, if it's a wooden, that would probably hold a child. Uh, you know, uh, just don't look down. And uh, Norman even left in that note. He was just like, um, you know, they're all all of the uh, distances between the wall and the and the cliff. That's not constant. They're not all uh, specific. There are certain areas that aren't super safe, but are closer than the other ones. 
Because, so the, right, because it's a wall on one side, but it's just a natural cliff on the other. So. Exactly. So they couldn't have set that up there. So uh, they get the zip tie ready. And th- I mean, I'll be honest with you, Nick, this chapter really got my heart pounding. Like I was watching like the final scene in like a, a movie or something it's like a really the exciting. Monka, uh, Monka doesn't usually do that. Yeah, because it's just like, oh, shit, are they going to are they going to make it? Oh, shit. The one part of it that really stands out to me because they've got the grappling uh, line going and then these two kids are just like, and the other ropes will be sent over with bottle rockets. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Whatever works. I mean, I would question they might not be powerful enough to carry that heavy of a, like that long of a length of rope, but Hey, I mean, use enough, you know, whatever the, the, okay, sure. Uh, there's also an awkward moment. Cause this one kid who looks like he's kid Aoyama from how much <laughs> yeah, he's sparkly. Guy. He's like, he's like, I'm going to go zipline across. <laughs> yeah, I'm the cool kid. I ain't afraid. See of you nothing. later, Ray. <laughs> he's got the constant. He's got the constant twinkle right next to his eye. Hey, get used to them because these might be like the new supporting characters coming up here in the next arc. I'm sure so we're going to have to yeah, get used to, especially those four kids that uh, got focus as being the first ones that uh, Emma uh, talked to. At least we got rid of Phil, that freaking kid. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Have you heard our joke about Ray? <laughs> What's what is the joke about Ray? Ray's our thing for Ray, bec- which we started doing um, in a weekly manga recap. Lives uh, is he talks like this, and he's still he's, <laughs> he's still got everything figured out. You know, like he's like you, if, if you guys if you guys if you guys had your baby memory still, then you would understand that <laughs> going vegan is the right way to go. It's better for you overall, and uh, you know, it just makes you just like generally a better person. Unless you style your hair like this, with one a, a whole bunch of it over your eyes, and, so and he talks like a uh, he talks like a valley girl from the mid nineties. Uh, okay, but a holier than thou, like holier uh, than thou, like yeah, I, I can kind of see that, yeah. So yeah. Ray is freaked out over this uh, because yeah, like it's one thing that they have this whole plan in place, but he's really taken in by the fact that all the kids are so brave in the face of all of this and, and that's that thing like you said the holier than thou he didn't really ever consider that these little kids would be able to be of any right. help at all They'd just be a detriment to them this entire time he thought we're going to have to leave these kids behind only don and gilda are could possibly keep up with the three of us and yeah, uh, yeah they're getting stuff going they're all just waiting their turn getting themselves set they're and even, then norman they're... comes back to life <laughs> sure totally <laughs> And, you know, not just the fact that they're being brave in this one moment, but the, he realizes, wow, for the past two months, these kids these kids have been preparing and, and all for this moment. And, yeah, just as Emma had hallucinated Norman a little bit before, Ray has the same hallucination. Apparently, I... cutting your ear off has a very specific hallucinatory effect. Dude, I saw a thing that people are just calling Norman. has He has Jedi ghost powers. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, let's go with that. He's like... I will guide you, my friends. I am one with the Force now. <laughs> uh, so, um, Ray looks over at Hallucination Norman, and he's like, oh, you're looking so smug right now. And Norman's like, well, yeah, because we got to fool you. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you mock me. You're on my head anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Norman's like, hey, this is great, right? You know, we, we want to be able to see this under normal circumstances. And this is what we thought could never happen. And it's all because it's Emma. Everyone joined fully believing in her. She's reckless and unreasonable, but she's straightforward and can say with everyone without wavering. So isn't this cool? Go. And this honestly, because I'll go ahead and say, because Chris told me that, uh, or rather he put up on uh, the WMR Twitter that this was his chapter of the week. And Ray was his character for the week. And I definitely see that because this is a big moment of... This is a big turning moment for Ray where we see that, you know, he's not this pseudo-antagonistic force anymore. Now he's going to be properly on board with uh, with the group effort because he's mm-hmm. seen the light and stuff. Uh, this is a very big, impor- important moment for him. But this moment also really drives home. This is why Emma is the protagonist of this story. We've had a few moments like this, but... This is Ray kind of realizing this is why Emma is she's the so great. she's the leader. Yeah, she's the leader and she's the one why people why people are following her. Yeah. And uh 
But the big, the other big important moment coming from all of this is, uh, you know, Ray now realizes through Norman telling him, "You don't have to give up. So you don't have to try." And, he, this is him realizing there is a way for me to resist mom without having to die at the end of all this. Yeah, because while, so. well, you figure you figure for the past two months, while Emma and all the other kids have been preparing for this, Ray has been basically just resigned himself to fate and just like, I'm gonna die. And so, you know, well, the they best establish, thing could... They established when he revealed his plan to Emma that he had actually been planning the suicide uh, to draw her away yeah. s- for like six years. Right, right, that's right, yeah. So, this is an even bigger turning point for him. Like, yeah. for more than, for longer than we've known him, that was what he had been planning to do, and now he realizes, mm-hmm. hey, there's another way I can do this. Yep. So, we cut over to Isabella for a bit, and she's like, how have they, how have those kids not shown up at the bridge yet? Yeah, something's up. And so, she's like, hey, maybe, well, maybe they could have climbed down into a different plant to hide, or... No. Oh. Oh, no shit. way! No. <laughs> no fucking way! They thought of that. <laughs> so, and, uh, and that woman can move because she, oh yeah, like, she gets going. <laughs> though, though, to be fair, to be fair, the way that that layout was on Norman, the the place where they're crossing is uh, like the wall, like right to the ne- like the plantation over, like three or two. I mean, on four or two, the one directly to the next of plantation three. So it's not like on the other side of the walls or anything like that. So she doesn't have to go. She doesn't have to go straight from. I don't think that she ever actually left section plan three, though, because she's still on her radio. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a portable radio. I knocked my mic over there, but it's a it's a portable radio. But I don't know if she left plan three. I don't think she. I'm not really sure. Um, so. The, they're continuing to the effort to move people along, but suddenly one of the kids, Gemma, freaks out. And she's like, she's shaking all over, and she's like, "Oh, you know, it's so scary. What if I fall?" And when she freaks out, some of the other kids are like, "Oh, yeah, uh. <laughs> oh yeah." Uh. But and Emma is like, "Oh no, this is bad." But immediately Ray just scoops her up, and he's like, "Hey, it's okay. We'll go across together. Uh, you know, tie her around my waist. I'll carry her across, and we'll go and we'll go like that. It'll be fine." And uh, he and he also stops to assure the last two kids, aside from her and Emma, uh, saying, "Hey, are you two gonna be all right? You know, going across yourself?" And they're like, "Yeah, we'll be fine." We and got this. He goes well, across. He goes across the line, and it's like, "Oh, wow, Ray did a friendly thing." <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is really gonna be a turning point for Ray's character, like you said, and we're and moving forward from here. Yeah, he's not gonna have the same kind of attitude he had up till this point. And there's a big speech that he gives in his you know, in an internal monologue. It's like, you know, a, a destiny that couldn't be changed no matter how much I cursed it. My lonely battle, not being able to reveal the truth or save the others. If you can't do something, you have to give up. Wishing for more could cost you everything. I was scared, frantically just trying to stay in the moment. I wanted to chase an ideal, but I couldn't. But now, am I allowed to chase it? Am I allowed to wish that no one will die for a future that is like a dream? Thanks. I understand now. You got me, Norman. I can die later. Da, na, na. <laughs> and uh, we see that uh, you it's know Emma, who's the last one on the wall, and that's the kind of heart beating moment. That's like, oh shit, oh yeah. shit. And there's, there's a there's a moment because Emma is standing up there with the last two kids. When you see Isabella is is now on top of the wall, she's racing towards them. And uh, there was a, definitely a moment where I where I was afraid because you see all the kids on the other side, and then. And then Emma looking behind her as Isabella is approaching, and because of the way that it's drawn, you think, "Oh yeah. no, is Isabella gonna be? Is Emma gonna be stuck there uh, by herself at the last? Because she caught them at mm-hmm. the last minute." Yeah. But it's a, of course, just a trick of the art and uh, and the sequential art, and uh, the kids are are gone and escaping into the woods. Uh, their lines and they've cut the lines behind them so they can't be easily pursued. And uh, mm-hmm. Emma just catches a glimpse of Isabella on, on the top of the wall as they fade into the into the darkness. It's a really good chapter. Um, big character moments. It's action packed, surprisingly for this kind of a story, and it's yeah really intense. So uh, really good stuff. I love this. I love the series, and I'm really, really, really excited because they're outside the compound now. They're outside Anything the can happen. House. Oh man. 
I mean, this is what it's kind of been building to the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think that it would happen actually this soon, but you know, with the glimpses that we've gotten, these hints of more that could uh, occur in the future. Now it's like, Hey, there's a world of possibilities out there. And I, I haven't really been that pumped for a chapter in a long time, but uh, I mean, this is probably the most pumped chapter for promise Neverland I've ever had really. Um, but yeah, I, I have no idea what's going to go on here next chapter. If it's going to be like focusing mostly on the demons trying to figure stuff out, or if we're gonna, just going to cut right to them in the woods trying to figure out where they're going, because you figure you got the bridge leading to the way out. That's the main way, so you'd figure they would still have like areas around the immediate plantation. You know, like I don't know. Yeah. So okay. uh, we're going to do the seven deadly sins. Which uh, I'll mostly be handling then. Yeah, you take the reins on that one. So, uh, King has gone out of the illusion still. Diane is still inside of the body of Droll in the flashback dream thing. And uh, so she is squaring off against uh, Meliodas' brother, uh, what's it? Zeldris. And uh, Zeldris is confronting uh, Diane and the two Gouthers. Going, facing off, and uh, Diane's like, okay, I'll buy time for you two to escape. So you you go, I'll handle this. I'm the king of the giants now, so I can definitely do this. And uh, so the Gouthers leave, and uh, Diane goes into the Dance of Droll, using earth magic to summon a whole bunch of power. Uh, the land is ripping apart beneath their feet, and she's like, alright, let's have a match here. And Zeldris is just is just like, eh, I'm not, I don't really want to be your enemy. And immediately just drop kicks into her chest, uh, caves in her chest and knocks her to the ground. No problem at all. And, uh, Diane's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Cause she is already squared off with one of the other 10 commandments and completely shook off his attack with no problem. And Zeldris took her down with absolutely no form, no problem. And so, she tries to summon more magic to unleash her Gaia form, and she's like, I can't use my magic. What the hell? Yeah. And Zeldris is like, I'm Aizawa. <laughs> um, I've been hearing a lot of stuff about Meliodas' uh, brother, and just like, oh my god, he's so he's such an awesome character. You need to read just for him. I'm like, okay, I don't know. He hasn't really gotten to do a whole lot yet. <laughs> I don't know. I sort of told someone telling me, that, oh man, he's such a badass character. I'm like, okay. Um, and Zell just says, I have been given magic from the demon lord to put to use. You could say I'm the demon lord's proxy. Now, I've read all 215 chapters of Sun Deadly Sins, and even I'm like, I don't know exactly what that involves, but okay. <laughs> I know there's a fairy king, so I guess there's a demon king too. I guess that would make sense. Mm. Uh, so Zell just says, you have a choice now, king of the giants, droll. You will either die here or or you will join the Ten Commandments. And uh, so, inside of, outside of the dream, uh, King is talking with the real Droll, and Droll is explaining what happened there. And he's like, so this is the choice that Diane has to make, the same way that King made his choice to uh, spare life, and that was how he woke up and had passed the test. Now Diane is left with, with now you will have to make a different choice for me. I chose to join the Ten Commandments. Uh, and, you know, it was... I, to run away from battle would have been an even greater disgrace. So those are the two options. Join or die. Mm -hmm. But King is like, but you just told me that if you die in the dream, you die for real. Which means that even if she chooses the right choice, she can't wake up. But if she chooses the wrong <laughs> choice, then she won't wake up. Ah, okay. So she's left in this catch 22 and Droll's just like, I just wanted to know which was the right move to live as one of the King 10 commandments or die as a giant. And King is freaking out. Like, Diane, no, don't do it. Don't take the choice. No. Um, and inside the dream, Zeldris is, um, bringing up Droll's past. And of course, telling Diane things that she doesn't actually know about herself. Uh, you know, Oh, you were peerless in strength, but also peerless in loneliness. You towered over the other giants, your skin a sapphire blue, your one eye hiding your magic. Like an unusual rock formation, you have four arms. I understand that even among your brethren, you were treated like an outcast. But that allows Diane to sympathize with Droll's situation because, as a child, she didn't like battling, she didn't fit in as a giant, and so she's like, oh, so Droll's 
kind of like me in that respect. Um, and so Zoe says, you know, they would probably hold a festival for you these days, but you've never actually had a friend who understood you. But, hey, us demons, we get it. We're outcasts. Yeah. You'd fit in. So join us. Death or the Ten Commandments. And uh, so Diane has made up her mind. King is freaking out outside the dream. So she and going, don't do it, Diane. He's crying. And Diane immediately goes, I'm awake. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And King, of course, freaks out. His eyes bug out. And he's still crying there. Uh, and Diane's like, hey, I made it back. And Drill's like, impossible. What did you do? How'd you wake up? <laughs> And Diane, and Diane says, "Oh, I ran away." <laughs> Face fault. Um, you and did the impossible. I feel like there's probably going to be a little bit of follow up on this because it seems like yeah. a very simple solution to the issue. But yeah. Diane is there, and hey, she was given her memories back by Gauther, so she grabs King and gives him a big old kiss, and that's where the yeah. chapter ends. Yeah, I, I guess that's very significant. Well, to give you to make you understand, Diane has I, I, had okay, her I, Diane I, said her memory erased multiple times, so multiple okay. times she has forgotten the fact that she and King were in love. So oh, see, because I know King had a thing for her because mm -hmm. I've seen like the, like the first season of the anime, and it was like one of those things where she didn't like him back. I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's what their shtick is, but she was actually in love with him. Okay, that's that's interesting. They had a past. Yeah. They had a past together that she didn't know about. So King was infatuated with her because he knew about the past uh, and she didn't. She re I see. she regained her memories at the end of the first arc. Realized she was in love with with King. Okay. But Gauther, who is a dick, erased her memories again. So she didn't remember is that she. That? Is, yeah, Gauther's the lust guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He went through a lot of growth in this arc as well. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway. I mean, it's only it's only 216 chapters. I probably left out probably around whenever season one ended, so I could probably get caught up in a relatively short amount of time, I guess. Yeah, and then you know you'll just shut up all the people who are telling you to read it. So <laughs> there, there you go. That that'll happen. Well, that'll never end. I keep I keep getting recommendations for Jagon or Jagan or yeah. however you pronounce that. I, I get a lot of that, but you know whatever. Um, but I guess the moral of the story is, you know, that's that's a good pickup line. You can go up to a girl and be like, hey, okay, you don't remember me, but we were but. badly in love at one point. <laughs> and I erased your memories in order to protect you. <laughs> oh, Aren't okay. you well, grateful you towards me? <laughs> that would that would probably only work one out of every hundred times, but it might. It's like, you know. <laughs> well, if you round up, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, what's next? Black Clover. Ah, yes. This. All right. A a chapter more. that I was really pumped for because we get to see the king, and then I immediately. <laughs> what disappointment <laughs> we have all experienced got to see the king. from this. <laughs> now, granted, granted, Nick, I have bought uh, the first few volumes of Black Clover because I'm really into it. So I read the first okay. few chapters all all you over and, again. We'll have to have like you and Annalise be on it at the same time one of these times. <laughs> <laughs> Does she not like it? She loves Black Clover. She, okay, that I think she and I clash well. sometimes because I don't like uh, big parts of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't a fan at the beginning, but that's I'm not going to get into that. But the basic thing is, the king was shown before this just in like silhouette, like he was right. behind. He was like with a bunch of harem of bitches behind like a uh, cloth, so you couldn't see him. And so I read that chapter recently, and then this chapter just came out, and I'm like, oh, that's rather convenient. We get to see him now. I thought he was going to be a rather good-looking, attractive fellow, you know. But uh, anyway, let's that mustache. Oh god. Yeah, oh god, he's just—he's a dick. He's a dick. He's a, like one of those kings, like from you know, that are just. You know, we'll get into it. Let's just do it. So yes, the uh, star ceremony thing where they announced how great you know and Asta have been doing has all wrapped up. Uh, the crowd is whipped up into a fervor. Uh, and uh, the Wizard King says, Oh, and uh, now that the achievements have been announced, here's what you've all been waiting for. Presenting the Royal King of the Clover Kingdom. And us is like, Huh, what kind of guy is the king anyway? <laughs> and uh, so the king comes out and is like, Yes, now adore me, public. Ooh. Literally, the second I saw his face, didn't even need to say a word. I'm like, I know exactly who this guy is. 
Nobody with eyes like that could be a good person. (laughs) And really, and really, I should have figured this. Because in a world of the of the Clover Kingdom where all the elites are all snooty, pompous assholes that are like, Oh, you common plebs can't do anything to aid the fight because you're peasants. Like, if they had a king that was, like, pretty chill with the peasants and everything, that that might change the attitude a little bit. So it just makes sense that the king would have the same attitude, you know? And he's so obsessed with image. Donald oh, yes. fucking Trump over here. It's like he's oh, saying, yeah. go go into go into the wizard king and be like, you don't 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 stand directly beside me because you're overshadowed me. And he's like, yeah. I am a Justice Kira Clova, the thirteenth king of the Clover Kingdom. And people are like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, go king, yeah. yeah, great, awesome, yeah. we know you. And something that I only noticed this time around, his fucking face curls up the same way his mustache was his lips curl up like yeah it does Holy it's shit. so gross <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so immediately he's just like go for me war <laughs> it just immediately like a lukewarm but polite reception is like i'm the yeah. king i'm great look at the, look at this sublime matter ah, i'm so yeah he's, he gets into exu- it he he's exuding up. his aura yes. I am greater than any was a king. Look at me! Don't you understand? I'm royalty. I'm better than you. And immediately, people were just like, oh, "I wish the wizard king was king." It was like <laughs> three different said. people in the crowd was like, "I wish the wizard king was king." <laughs> Why do we even need him? Uh, and so the king's like, oh, "How dare you? Oh, and the golden dawn took first place again. I can't abide the color gold. They yeah. sidelined the cap brigades, captain by royals." I which, don't like it. I do not like it one bit. Which uh. doesn't even really make any sense because you're the king. You'd think you'd be all about gold, you know? You'd think that would be your shtick. Uh, any... I don't know. Let's see here. <laughs> maybe it has to do... Maybe he likes purple? Maybe he likes the purple orcas? Yes, because of purple's regal by the orcas, but he doesn't really mention that. Yeah. He's just pissed at Julius because he's like, Oh, you were hogging all the popularity for yourself. This is why they don't like me. This chapter definitely made me feel less suspicious of William Vengeance, by the way. <laughs> just like, uh, maybe a little bit, yeah. He's like, all right, anyone who's got to put up with that kind of treatment. It's just like, <laughs> I'm sure even if you are an evil douchebag that you've got your reasons. <laughs> oh, man. So but the king, has a, the king has a great idea, Nick. On how oh to yes, get I will back. get, I'll get them on my side with this announcement. <laughs> The high dot of the Isle of Midnight Sun has been located, and until now we've been suited to many of their attacks, and they held the initiative in every battle. So this time, we will attack them! Attack on the enemy at last! So I shall form an even more elite group from the Maginice, forming the ultimate hand-picked unit. They will be called the Royal Knights! And one way for now, a test will be held for all Magic Knights, and those who pass will be allowed to join the Royal Knights! And my royal eyes will literally the eye of the midnight sun! And Dude, the- I'm sure he sounds exactly like that, too. Like, to a T. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So that, I mean, it does help. It motivates the, cl- the crowd, and he strikes this epic pose. He's doing the Clover salute oh! thing. He's just like, ha <laughs> ha, fucking nailed it. Julius was the one that did all the work investigating, but of course I took the credit. And of course, because Asta's Asta... He just uh, jumps in with, why is the king doing the choosing? The ones who, who we think are awesome are the wizard king and the magic knight captains, not the king. And the king's like, all right, wait, <laughs> And Asa just, like, starts chatting very obviously with you know about it. It's like, you know, I've never heard the king doing anything important. What about you, you know? No, me either. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, historically... Yeah, I mean, the king doesn't usually, you know, ride into battle. I mean, some of them did, but not all of them. This is all Game of Thrones and shit, you know? So usually it's the king who sits in a castle and they're supposed to be protected. But the difference is this is a world where people have incredible, crazy magic powers. So when you have the choice between, like, Julius, who has, like, time magic, pretty cool, compared to just some pompous asshole sitting on his freaking throne all day, you're going to see a distinction there. Yeah. Yeah. And Asher just keeps on going on and on and on. He's just like, you know, he's got all that awesome mana, but he's never really done anything good for people. You know, I don't have magic, so I don't really know. But this king is like, 
I don't know. It's like he's got no aura. Or he seems kind of petty. And you know, he was like, come on, Asa, you should read the mood. This is no time to be telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably the greatest thing that Yuno has ever said, honestly. Pretty much. You, you, and Yuno kind of agrees with him. He's just kind of like, yeah, you're right, you're right. When you put it that way, he does kind of. <laughs> so the king and me is just like... Execute them! Execute that revolting pair immediately! Kill Off them! With their heads! <laughs> Off with their heads! And Asa's and As is like, What? And you is like, This is all your fault. Great <laughs> uh, Asta, now we're gonna get guillotined. That's just great. So the crowd's just kind of left to go, Uh. <laughs> Although you do see that guy, he appears throughout the story. The guy from, he's in the Mantis, and he's just like, <laughs> idiot, he's gonna get killed. So, Julius dissolves the situation immediately. He's like, come on, calm down, your majesty. Please, pardon these two. They may become the shield that protects you someday. And if you recklessly brandish your power or something like that, you'll make the king's authority look cheap. And he's just like, I, I just don't, I'm the king, I'm supposed to, okay. Like, let's try not to kill the two people that are being honored for being, you know, helpful to the country. Screw that. They made fun of me. Kill them. <laughs> the Wizard King, you know, turns things around, but he's just like, hey, you know, come on, you know, like, Royal Knights, I'm looking forward to this, you know. So, Magic Knights, show us your courage, and we see an under of the captains are like, yeah, we're going to do this thing. I'm going to... And uh, the deer guy is like, I'm going to make up for my dead last finish and stuff. And the king is still just like, Ugh! Curse you all! Um, the Wizard King pulls aside Yuno and Asta, and he says, Hey, you know, I know that you guys are going to be trying off the Royal Knights. You guys are great, but you're still rookies, and there are going to be a whole bunch of veterans who are going to be showing up for the selection test. So, don't get too full of yourselves as you're moving forward. Exactly. So, nice, cool little, like, hey, I like both you guys, so here's what you're in for, yeah. kind of thing. Um, kind of... It's going to suck yeah. when it turns out he's a traitor. Like it, this, this. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's also going to suck the fact that you know, they want to join those Royal Magic Knights and they just pissed off the king. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be an issue there. Even if they end up joining, it, they might uh, run into some problems. Yeah. And asta has got a cool little thing because he's really excited about this. And he's like, hey, you know, if I'm going to do this, I should figure out how to actually really draw out that power that i that i was yeah using the, the demon possession thing also you have to think that the other members of the royal guard i mean it provided that the royal guard i still got bleach on my mind the royal uh knights aside from you know they would probably be as much of pompous assholes as you know a lot of the mm. other people uh but they're heading down from the tower and they hear someone shouting at leo of the uh crimson lions and he's like yeah um yes and the the new captain punches him in the just face freaking just pieces him right down <laughs> caves in his face and, he's, and she's just really upset that they're in that their group is in fifth place and she's yelling at them well like she's kind of going super saiyan as she kinda. just her magical aura is surging around her hair floating up and she's you can just imagine that she's she's quite literally just on fire right now as she's doing this so it looks as though we're going to get a bit of an introduction to the new captain uh, in all yeah. of this, which is, I, I think that that's that that's cool. I was talking. So to Chris. what do you what do you think? Like Fuego's sister or something? Like what do you what do you think about this? I would imagine that she is related because she does look a lot like he yeah. and Leo. So yeah. And she's, she's also very comfortable with punching Leo in the face. So nope. <laughs> yeah, probably a sister, maybe a cousin or something. I don't know, something like that. I was talking to Chris about this, the, I think, the last time, which is, you know, I like the the approach that's being taken with the guilds, that we're being gradually introduced to them over the course of all this, and mm -hmm. it's a very consistent kind of uh, getting information and familiar yeah, with these characters yeah. in the organization. But that's the chapter. Um, it was entertaining, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of disappointing at the same time, because, of you know, <laughs> it, they played me, you know? Uh, you get that introduction to the king. He's got he was in the shadows and such. Each time he's been, in, he's we've gotten even a glimpse of him, and then he I, comes out and he's just an asshole. <laughs> I think it's always because like through shonen like cliches and stuff, we expect like ooh the shadowy character that we didn't know much about for a hundred chapters is making an appearance, and then we expect him to be cool or have some cool power or something, and it's just 
he he's a freaking doofus. It's just like crap. Uh, but that's that. Yep. So well played to uh, Yuki Dabata. You got me, man. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, really, you got me too. Totally. Apparently, next chapter. By the way, in the like the ending blurb, it's like. In the next chapter, the new captains of Crimson Lion's Rage is, is over Asta, so they're probably going to do some argument there, so that would mm. be interesting to see. All right, so what's next? Just One Piece, then? Yep, we're going to wrap things up with One Piece. All right, good, good. They're holding a big character popularity poll for the 20th anniversary. You can go on Viz and vote for your favorite character, viz.com slash op-poll. Oh, seriously? And... I could... Oh, okay. Didn't yeah, know that. Thank you. Can... Anyone can do it. Uh, oh man, because so. I did I did the review and I'm just like I can't enter because I can't read Japanese. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> but uh, okay, so uh, it's chapter 863, the Honorable. Uh, we get a flashback to where Luffy was coming up with uh, his mirror copy eating the cake plan, um, because remember he told Beige that he really wanted to make a really awesome entrance. Yeah. And so he's like, hey, if you put the mirror inside of the wedding cake, we can bust through the cake straight from the mirror world. It'll be cool, funny, and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Beige is kind of cool with this. Uh, Brulee yeah. is not so Stop much. Stop using my powers this way! <laughs> I uh, told, like, she she is going to screw something up. She's going to get to the point where, because she they can't suppress her power like Sea Prism Stone or anything because they need it. But she's right. like going to just get to the point where she's like, I'm tired of taking orders from you. You can kill me at this point. I'm not fucking doing it. Screw you. <laughs> you know? I mean, they've been getting along pretty well so far, so I don't know. Well, you, you define this fairly well because she still seems to be, you know, upset about it. I don't know. Hmm. But anyway, Chopper brings up that on top of hiding in the mirrors, you know, she can also use that ability to change animals into like doppelgangers of Luffy. And so uh, Luffy runs out really quick into the forest, captures a bunch of wild animals, and uh, that brings us pretty much up to the present. Uh, oh, and the two members of the Fire Tank Pirates that we saw hiding as chefs, those are the ones that actually implanted the mirror inside the cake there. Yep. So we're all caught up to where we were at the end of the last chapter. Uh, the cake is just bursting apart. And remember, it's you know, massively tall, so it's actually yeah. kind of falling over onto people. It's just like falling people. down on everybody there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, oh, and Sanji has got uh, pudding because they're both falling together from the top of it. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get to see her, like, if she's still, all, like, crazy, like, oh, I don't understand what's going on here, but we don't really get to see her in the chapter, but, nope. yeah, so Sanji saves her. I'm sure that it'll be uh, revisited uh, later oh, yes. on. I like how you get the kind of face-to-face -to, -face, uh, to start things off between Charlotte and Luffy, but it's yeah. one of the copies, it's not the real Luffy, it's just like, ah! Yeah, it's like a crazy, like, cat or something, they're all just eating shit. I was worried that because there were so many Luffys that, like, so many of the Charlotte members were just like, we'd be seeing Luffy die so much in this chapter, just like, <laughs> just like, oh, you're not him, oh, you're not him, like, cracking their necks and stuff, a little bit too violent for One Piece, but, uh, yeah, they can't find out where the real one is, and Big Mom begins to do the same thing similar to what happened with um, when the, the picture is supposed to be broken. She clutches her head and begins to emanate. So I guess the uh, the picture, it's not as, it's, the cake isn't as valuable as the picture, but it's still very valuable to her. Right. So it's, she it's, almost has a, mm -hmm. has a similar reaction to it. Yeah, she starts to freak out over the cake being toppled and she turns on a bunch of the chefs uh, because they're like, you must bring me a new cake! And they're like, what, what but... We, Come on, but, we can't! It's it's not like the whole island's a cake or something. Where are we going to find another cake? Life or wedding cake! Choose now! And uh, the newspaper guy uh, is like, Ah, she's using our soul pocus! What a scoop! <laughs> uh, Reminds me of that um, that freaking filler character from Toriko, Tina, you know? Always running around with the, 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 the photo. Remember her? Yeah. I've never watched Toriko myself. So. I never watched the anime. Well, that's no. nice. Well, anyway, uh, I forget the character's name, but it's just Big Bird. And so, um, yeah, the, the words <laughs> to the soul, the soul pocus uh, is the thing where you, like, present, present, like, an ultimatum. And basically what it comes down to is, are you afraid of death? If you have any mm -hmm. fear of death in your soul, then you will get your soul ripped out. And that's what she does with these chefs. Yeah, she's just grabbing their souls up. Yep. Bye! <laughs> yep, dead! Well, we don't know if they're dead necessarily, but right? Because nobody dies in One Piece, so no one dies in the present storyline of One Piece. You go to flashback land, and it's all bets are off. Right, but right, right. right now, uh, so we cut to inside the mirror world. 
uh, people are gathering up. Oh, okay, we've sent out all of the all of the fake Luffy's. Everyone's gone. Brule is just like, ah! <laughs> why am I in this hell? Uh, some of the other Straw Hats head after her as well. Uh, Jimbei and Pedro and uh, Nami and Carrot and Chopper all go inside. So basically, it's just Caesar Clown uh, along with Brule inside the Mirror World. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, there's a fun, it? there's a kind of a funny moment with Caesar where yeah. they're all leaving and uh, they're like we're leaving the rest to you Caesar and he's like you human scum is he really that bad I think that's Carrot saying that and you know they respond with he's the worst and you have this moment with Caesar he's like clutches his fist like yeah I am the worst yeah I think he's like <laughs> taking some pride in it a little bit I don't know he looks kind of upset to me he's like, <laughs> I, I don't know like he's grimacing it's, really, it's but a I can really take difficult to read expression <laughs> it, it is it really is I could take it either way. So, um, of course, Charlotte turns her attention to the various Luffy's, and she's like, Which one's the Straw Hat? Which one is Straw Hat Luffy? How dare you in my way? And Capone's like, "Uh Uh-huh, it's a diversion. Does she really think she's going to get an answer? And, of course, he's not going to come straight for her. And Luffy's just like, It's me! It's me! And then Capone's face. From Sage. Um, on, like not as be- not as crazy as Jimbei's face fault when he did that, but it's pretty close. It's just like a just a jaw drop. Just uh. oh man. And uh, Luffy spots the picture frame that they're heading after. Capone quickly uh, signals over to his men who have got their launchers ready. Yeah. And uh, then uh, we go over to where uh, Chopper and Carrot and Nami are hiding. They're still inside part of the cake. And now he's like, okay, once Luffy breaks the picture, we'll jump out three seconds later. So let's do this. And you know, let's t- let's be serious about this. And Karen and Chopper are stuffing their face with yeah, cake. Yeah, no, like, no, no. Cake. I mean, come on, Nami. We're in a giant wedding cake. What do you expect here? <laughs> uh, M- Big Mom uh, summons Zeus and Prometheus to go there. after uh, Luffy. But uh, what's his name? Whose name I keep forgetting. The awesome guy. Dogtooth or Katakuri is the two Katakuri. different translations I've heard of that, yeah. Reveals that uh, he has a devil fruit, uh, which is not nearly as impressive as his absurd observation hockey. Uh, Indeed. But, but it's, it's still, still pretty logia. good. <laughs> yeah, it's still a Logia. It's the Mochi Mochi no Mi, mm-hmm. which Mochi being like a rice pastry in Japan. But I've also read the way that it's interpreted is anything that is just generically sticky mm-hmm. in, is, is referred to as mochi. So basically think of it like he has like a chewing gum kind of fruit, kind of. Yes. Make, and then so he, you know, kicked using this fruit, coated his leg and arm him in hockey, slams into Luffy, causes damage, but also gets him stuck in his leg so he can't get out. So Luffy is stuck there, and uh, Kakuri is like, okay, you know, this one, this is the real one, uh, Mama. You know, the rest of them are just animals from the island, altered by, by Rulay's really, really powers. You can ignore them. Uh, using his uh, ho- hockey to just tell all this stuff, Luffy can't mm. get free. And uh, Big Mama is just like, hey, come on, do you think you're helping here? You don't get to call the shots. And uh, Kakuri says, L- listen, Mama, he's going after Mother Carmel's picture. Oh, is he now? <laughs> you know, that kind of look on her face. You give her the nasally expression. I kind of give her like a redneck woman kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> like, because I think just big fat, like honey boo-boo's mom, you know, like big fat woman in a moo-moo, you know? Mm, I can see that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make me a wedding cake or die! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's just fun. Uh, oh, man. So, so Capone's freaking out now because, oh, shit, what are we going to do? Uh, and Pedro is like, what are we going to do? But Jimbei says, I've got this. And he uses his ability, T-Current Shoulder Throw. And Kakuri is like, oh, don't explain Damn. my powers to them. Stop it, Because he knows he's going to explain his powers to them. I, this, is a cool, this is a cool little thing that uh, I think... The, because Kata, Katakuri is a little bit too cool for like, I will explain to you exactly how my powers work. So that's what you have Jimbei for. Right. And, and I was questioning at first, where did Jimbei get the water for that attack? But then it's actually, like, the translation is Kairu, which is black tea. So he's usually, like, actual tea for that technique. So it's like cracker's fruit. You get it wet, can't work, so he slams it into the, the, the mochi mochi fruit thing, and Luffy gets freed from that, and then Jinbei... 
I mean, people were honestly throwing it out like, oh, this is a Brooke chapter for what we're going to find out at the end. Oh, it's all Not about really. Brooke. I'm like, he gets a, a moment G-Bay. at the end. He gets a moment at the end. All my fans like were like, oh, yeah, Brooke, 2017, year of Brooke. And I'm like, really, guys? This is a Jimbe it's chapter. A moment, but it's all about Jimbe. It's and all Jimbe, about Jimbe. Jimbe covers for them because, you know, the cat's not completely out of the bag yet. So he's like, okay, I told them about Mother Carmel's portrait. Yeah. It's, so that way it, they take the suspicion off of Capone. And he's like, you know, I, I've been involved in your operation, so of course I've heard the rumors. And uh, so Big Mom's like, ah, so you're, so now you're rebelling with, with me from me for real, huh? And, Big uh, Mom? She goes just to sign her thing. She goes through so many weird changes. Like she's first like like oh my god they're wrecking my cake. Oh my god I'm pissed at Straw Hat. Well Jimbe you're <laughs> leaving are you? I'm like uh, bipolar much or tripolar? I don't know. And uh, Big Bird newspaper guy is like ah oh, big news Jimbe the former lawyer is gonna join the Straw Hats. And uh, because Jimbe flat out says like I'm gonna quit from your crew Big Mom and I'm gonna join the Straw Hats. And uh, Big Mom's like, well, you can do what you want once you're gone, but not before you've paid the proper price. You don't want to live in shame, do you? And dun, dun, dun. And I mean, to be fair, yeah, Jimmy's a pretty honorable dude. I, I think in this case, you can kind of just, like, push that aside. But okay, he's not just going to, you know, leave. And Jimbe says, if you promise not to harm anyone aside from me, I will offer you as much of my life as you can take. And Luffy's like... You can't join if you're dead, though, Jimbei. <laughs> I would love Brooke to pop out, like, question mark. What? Excuse me! <laughs> <laughs> so Big Mom's like, oh, I love this. Uh, uh, you'd rather choose death than stay in a place you dislike? Well, you'll get no sympathy from me. All right, dummy, you've got a deal. Stay or life. And then once again, she's doing the target eye Renegon shit there. I don't she's know what it was. Looking really intimidating. Because Jimbe is a big guy, but she is just oh, dwarfing is. him as she looms over him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jimbe, though, I love this. You know, not not a moment's of hesitation. Just kind of squints his eyes at her like, life. And yeah, take it, bitch. We're, yeah, cards are on the table. Now what? And Big Mom is kind of taken aback for a bit. Yeah, and, she said, I, and so she's like, stay or life? It, 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 and Jimmy's just staring up at her. And they're yeah, like... I guess she's just trying to do it, but it just won't work. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute, his soul's not coming out. So he's not afraid of Mama? And Jimmy's like, A man who would be crewmate of the future king of the pirates cannot afford to tremble in the presence of a mere emperor. I mean, come on, that was so freaking he's cool. He's so awesome! <laughs> he's, oh my god, he's so goddamn cool! And then he's like... And if you will not take my life, then I return your ritual cup. As of this moment, I quit the Big Mom Pirates. I appreciate all you have done for me. And freaking Chopper is like in tears like, that's so cool! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's great. And then Mama, though, being the very well-to-do, I mean, of course she will uh, listen to his wishes. Uh, She shatters the sake cup and just charges up Prometheus to just punch him right in the face. And we don't find out what happens from that, actually, so... Nope. All we see is that uh, someone who is clearly Luffy... (laughs) <laughs> yes, definitely. He's got his face, dude. It's got his Luffy's face and hat. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's Brooke in disguise for some reason as Luffy. I guess well, I it was so it, that he could slip into the crowd of the animals. Yeah, I, I think it's just the case of yeah, he doesn't look a thing like Luffy. The height and everything's wrong, and it's clearly just like a plastic bag painted with Luffy's face. He taped over his head like a two dollar Halloween costume. But like a, he looks kind of like a scarecrow. Yeah, yeah, kind of. But with all the chaos going on, and there's like like two dozen other Luffy's I, I think he would like just the color scheme you get that right you'll pretty much be able to to fit in and so he just takes a mallet and he smashes right. Mother Carmel's picture <laughs> done I love how he just kind of just like what <laughs> done yeah. he just peeks into the panel like yo ho ho yo ho ho and I have a theory that that picture is actually going to be linked to Big Mom, like, in a way beyond just, like, being a sentimental picture. Like, the second that it's broken, she'll have the reaction to it. And that might cut off the attack, you know, because she's, like, charging up to punch Jinbei right in the face. So that's just my take on it anyway. So 
Awesome yeah, chapter. I, I, I love this Jinbei. chapter. I love. I mean, I, Jinbei's never been one of my favorite characters, but he gained he gained some notches. He gained some points in this chapter. He really did. He had like one cool moment after another. It's like stay your life, life, boom. And then he had, I'm gonna be you know king of the pirates crew. I can't be afraid of a Yonko. Oh my god. And then he's like he's like he sits down in the middle of all this chaos and plays out a sake cup. Like okay, man, that's and wow. He's so cordial about it too. It's like. So thank you for like, everything. You just got Leave owned, Big Mom. You just got owned <laughs> by a fish. Oh, man. <laughs> so, All right. Really happy with this. And that is going to bring our conversation to a close. So uh, yes. let's wrap up by naming our favorites. Uh, oh. series. I got uh, Chris's Series of the Week and Character of the Week. Uh, like I said before, he chose Ray and he chose The Promised Neverland. Mm. I should have probably told you about this beforehand. But, no, uh, no, I know. I, I, I heard about it. I, just, I keep forgetting every time I'm on. It's just I don't want to say it, but I have to say The Promised Neverland as my as my series. I got to. For the character is definitely Jinbei for all the reasons we just laid out. Character of the week. But uh, yeah, I got to go Promised Neverland just because I'm so hyped. To, I'm, I'm genuinely so excited to see this chapter this week. And uh, I'm 100% there with you. Uh, I chose Jinbei and I chose Promised Neverland. Uh, I mean, like Jinbei was really awesome and Promised Neverland was really awesome. Um, so a couple of really good chatters from that. We didn't actually have the audience poll running in the chat like we normally do. I might, mm -hmm. I don't know, I might try and put up like a straw poll and tweet that yeah, to yeah. listeners so that we can actually there's, get that um, down. But, and I, uh, I don't know if you use YouTube to upload your stuff. I know you upload it eventually, mm -hmm. but there's an option you can add polls to YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, very simple ones with the, the, the cards that they have. Hmm. Might look into that. Yeah. It's but, pretty simple to use. But uh, that's it. That's going to do it for the show. So uh, thank you, everyone, who joined us. Uh, normally, we do do a live recording on hitbox.tv slash reality and uh, twitch.tv slash reality, but uh, due to my own limitations, <laughs> couldn't really do that this week. This will be uploaded as soon as I can figure out how to put it on all of the different ways we share it. I'll have to be talking to Chris about that. You can follow Chris at Royal OT, and you can follow me at Y Roller of Time. You can follow the podcast at the Mar Podcast. You can follow Matt Teching101 at Teching101. As yeah, well as on his own YouTube YouTube's channel. Teching yeah, just type in Teching101 somewhere. You'll find me. You'll find a bunch of different... Because you're shared across like 50 different platforms or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just got to spread my bases out. But uh, thanks, Nick, for having me on as a guest host. Awesome. I was... Uh, yeah, is uh, is Chris going to be back next week? Or are you going to do He'll like a different host every week? Oh, okay. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, right. we'll, we'll have you on again, I'm sure. So thank, thank you. you very much. Yes, it was a lot of fun. And uh, you can check out our show, Weekly Mug Recap at Podbean.com, iTunes, uh, subscribe, leave a comment and rating, uh, send all sorts of feedback stuff to Weekly Mug Recap at Yahoo.com. You can send in questions for us to answer in our next Q&A episode. You can send in suggestions for manga for us to take as a suggestion. Uh, and, uh, yeah, special thanks also go out to our Patreon supporters. Your support allows us to create bonus content for you guys to enjoy. I don't have uh, ready the list of new supporters, but uh, we'll make up to that when Chris is back next week. Um, yeah. Also, Steve Manor, Talker Artist, and Infamous Planet, uh, who does the frame for the show. Thanks to you guys. And uh, we're done. So, okay. Normally, when we end the show, we end on some bizarre kind of joke thing. I don't know how the hell Chris uh... does this, because he always figures it out. And then he prompts me, and I'm like, Why like can't he had it ready, like he, like he had it ready to go. No, he just comes up with something, like you know. Oh, okay. He's got some um, bizarre, bizarre mind, and I'm always just like, why couldn't we just like end the recording? When I had we're going to, to, I had to ride on a saddle like a five year old at a restaurant the other day because it was my birthday. You had to. <laughs> um, I, 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 we sit down. I went out with my mother. Of course, I told her not to tell them it's my birthday because I don't like the song and dance shit. She immediately blurts out it's my birthday. I turned to the waiter. I'm like, please do not sing. They didn't just sing to me. They did the thing they do for like little kids. It was like a Texas restaurant. They brought out a saddle and they made me sit on this shit. And they're like, howdy, partners. It's it, what's your name? Matt. How old are you? 24. And uh, I went with it. I was like, yeehaw, Kaye, all that shit. Because I, I just went along with it. But after I got done with it, I looked at my mom. I'm like. Okay, here's what's going to happen. We're going to eat our food. We're going to get in our car. We get in my car, and we are never going to talk about this moment again. You <laughs> and know? Then you talked about it for hundreds of people to listen to. <laughs> you know what? Because I realized, I was pissed at the time, but after I realized, like, that is kind of a funny story. So there you go. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. I okay, have no then. embarrassing stories to share. <laughs>
Oh, there you go. See you guys.